Welcome to the fantasy audiobook. Marvel. My ex-girlfriend is everywhere, all female Avengers are shocked. Chapter 61. After the celebration is over, Dr. Connors will continue to work hard for the clinical trial phase of body repair agents. This is the most brilliant achievement in his life, and Connors is more willing to do it himself. Everything is moving on a normal trajectory. Joe Luo has been doing nothing recently. He has been paying attention to recent changes in the situation. Tony made his public appearance for the first time after the attack, announcing that Stark Industries, which had closed its weapons manufacturing plant, would enter the energy sector in the future, and the arms business and manufacturing plants under his name were all packaged and sold to the same defense. Contractors Hanmer Industries Once the news was released, it shocked the entire energy industry. The old energy giants were shocked. If other companies transform and cross border, then these oil giants and energy tycoons will not react at all. Entering this industry means complying with their regulations. The game rule is different, but the guy Tony Stark is different. Leading the former military industry leader, breaking into the class solidified energy industry in one fell swoop, and occupying the market with new energy sources, is undoubtedly a silent challenge to the old system. Relying on the energy monopoly to earn wealth, they will never allow others to intervene, even if the opponent is the powerful Stark industry. An undercurrent gradually gathered, waiting for the right time, to deliver a fatal blow to Tony Stark. The mutant problem became more serious with Magneto's last action. William Stryker received strong support from above and began to build a team called, X Weapons, specifically to deal with mutant militants who threatened social stability. Joe Luo's eyes flickered, and the story of X-Men might happen again. Anyway, as long as this General Stryker does not die, his coveting for mutant will not disappear. With a light sigh, Joe Luo put his gaze on the invitation card on the table, the third Stark Industry Firefighter Family Donation Party. He whispered the words above. Is he still in the mood to attend such an occasion? According to the plot, Tony should be worrying about the palladium toxins in his body now. Those deadly toxins that spread along the blood vessels will gradually kill Iron Man. The story of Iron Man 2 is slowly being staged. There is no way, I can only help him secretly, who makes us friends. Joe Luo sighed helplessly. This fundraising party for the families of firefighters was supposed to be held six months ago, but because of Opadri's betrayal, Tony and Pepper were shot, and they were put on hold. It wasn't until Pepper took over as the top CEO of Stark Industries that he remembered holding charity events to restore the company's declining popularity and reputation. Stark Mansion, Underground Laboratory, Tony, accompanied by dynamic music, is replacing the palladium energy plate of the chest reactor, and at the same time taking out a portable blood detector, which shows that the toxin content in the blood is 14%. Before he got up, he added a lot more, he curled his lips, and sighed insignificantly. It's an ironic joke, the device that keeps me alive will also kill me. He lifted his clothes and installed the reactor near his chest. Some small black blood vessels spread like a spider web, like a fascinating flower drawing life in full bloom. Mindala. As smart as Tony, he knows that the solution is actually very simple. Find a few top doctors, perform a minor operation on himself, take out the shrapnel near the heart, and then give up the identity of Iron Man, and he can make this one gradually decay. His body regained its vitality. I am Iron Man, Tony murmured, letting him stop using steel armor and give up his new identity as superhero. This is absolutely impossible. However, if you continue to use arc reactor, the palladium toxin will penetrate the body along the blood circulation and gradually erode the internal organs, making the playboy slowly go to death. What about this, I'm Iron Man? He stared at himself in the mirror silently, and repeated again. Sir, Miss Potts is here, I suggest you tell immediately. Mute, the smart butler who had spoken to persuade was immediately silenced, and Pepper opened the door and walked in. Probably only she was able to walk into this underground laboratory without Tony's permission. If you don't have the devil's figure and angel's face that fascinates men's hormones, nor the powerful brain that is talented enough, then at least you have to have a good temper that can tolerate Tony's mean and vicious tongue and Sunere's narcissism all the time. Tony, I have 8,011 things to discuss with you. Pepper walked in aggressively. Appointed by his employer as the new chief executive officer of Stark Industries, Pepper was both pleasantly surprised and stressed. 
This giant enterprise in the military industry is now a mess that is difficult to clean up. Just leave the company's affairs to you, you don't need to let me take it personally. Tony avoided Pepper's angry eyes. He didn't want to tell her that he would die soon, so Pepper would definitely nag him to give up his Iron Man status and go to the hospital for treatment. But what can Tony, who lost his steel armor, do? Continue to return to the extravagant life of spending time and wine? Or as a successful arms dealer, a cold-blooded capitalist? People call him a playboy, billionaire, scientific genius, but no one has said that Tony Stark is a hero. He waited half a lifetime to get this opportunity to use his ability to change the world. Tony wanted to let people know that that bohemian playboy is not only chasing beauty and spending time, but he can also do some good things with his hands. You can't lock yourself in the laboratory and let me handle everything for you. Pepper's eyes are reddish, and the secretary, who has always been smart and capable, has recently endured huge amounts of pressure. The company's heavy operating tasks have already made Pepper exhausted. She had longed for a broader stage to show off her talents, but she shouldered a giant enterprise alone, which really made her somewhat powerless. I called you more than 30 calls and agreed to attend tonight's charity fundraising party, but you haven't even changed your clothes so far. For Stark Industries, this is a rare opportunity to return to the public. Create a good reputation and momentum in the sight of. Why should I sit with a group of hypocritical guys I don't know, actually the kindness of these people is just the boring compassion after making enough money, just like when you walk on the street and see a beggar, you will get it out of your pocket. Give out a few coins and throw them at him. Tony interrupted the chatter of the female secretary. He hated this kind of boring social interaction. The palladium element poisoning has not been resolved. Mark's armor needs to be updated. A lot of things are waiting for him to complete. It is not a good deal to waste time on this occasion. He turned his head and found that the lady secretary who had been working hard had disappeared outside the door, and the, click, sound of high heels stepping on the floor gradually faded away. The relaxed expression on Tony's face solidified a little bit, like the Joker actor after taking off his mask, looking at the crowd who left, with a dim light in his eyes. Huge amounts of emptiness fills my heart. This kind of fear and fear of a person looking at oneself alone toward the end of life, gradually devouring the soul, is unimaginable by other people. It's not Iron Man's Tony Stark, how can he be complete? Instead of living mediocrely, it's better to die like a superhero, at least someone will remember me. Tony laughed, he thought about it carefully, changed into an expensive suit, and casually jumped into a luxury sports car in the underground garage. The roar of the engine was like the roar of beast, full of wild power. I love you, New York. Accompanied by the wanton madness of roar, the world's limited edition Koenigsegg rushed out, and the sound of roar's whistling wind blew Tony's face, and he enjoyed the vitality brought by life to his heart's content. When Tony came to the party, he still chose the way he thought was the best way to play. In red and gold, the cool-looking steel armor descends from the sky in a free-falling pose in the dazzling colorful fireworks. Exciting music reverberates through the stage, and the lights focus on the Iron Man with his open hands. A bright beam of light fell, and behind a row of hot dancers kicking their dazzling long legs, the bottom of the stage was full of joy and applause. The circular stage under his feet revolved and opened, and several automatic robotic arms stretched out from it, dismantling Tony's steel armor efficiently and feeling the joyous roar cry from below. Tony Stark said he enjoyed it very much. He loved this kind of fullness. The feeling that the world's eyes are focused on oneself, roar calls from people's enthusiasm, igniting the heart that is gradually being corroded by palladium toxin. Tony is like a big star, immersing himself in the carnival shouts of the audience, the flame of enthusiasm almost ignites the night sky. When he stepped off the stage, he took a deep breath. The high-profile indulgence was fascinating, especially for him now. Soon this playboy with countless auras and multiple identities will never be able to enjoy it again. Such a wonderful feeling. I don't know if anyone will feel sad after I leave. Well, little Pepper will definitely cry out of shape. Standing in the empty backstage, Tony took out a portable blood detector, which showed that the toxin content in the blood had increased a lot more than before. He curled his mouth and sighed insignificantly. Death has always been the greatest fear of mankind, and it is also the ultimate destination. It's really rare, Tony Stark will also have a humble moment. 
A joking voice came from behind. Why are you fool here? Tony put away the blood tester in his hand, and turned around to see Joe Luo in surprise and joy. Why, aren't you happy to see me? Joe Luo laughed and opened his arms to Stark. Or, what are you doing to shame? You, Iron Man also opened his arms and hugged this old friend whom he hadn't seen for a long time. Where have you disappeared during this time? The group of people from S.H.I.E.L.D. are looking for you all over the world, but there is no news from you. I don't want to be found by them, how could they find me? Joe Luo smiled slightly and planned to skip this topic. I heard that Stark Industry is planning to enter the energy industry. How is the effect now? Oh leave these things to Pepper, you don't have to tell me. Glancing at the young face, Tony's heart was filled with gloomy emotions. As a fairly qualified biologist, I have to remind you that the palladium poisoning method of death is painful. Joe Luo could see the faintly darkened blood vessels covered by cosmetics, and the palladium toxin was like a fascinating flower absorbing Tony's vitality, spreading from his chest to his neck, about to kill the dandy. It's not that you have no choice, Tony, before the toxin has completely eroded your body, you still have a chance to save it. Tony shook his head and pointed to the arc reactor on his chest. We always have to leave something for the world after we die. My father founded Stark Industries, which imprinted the family's name in history. The departure of Tony Stark will not be remembered by people. He is just a lucky lucky man, but Iron Man is worthy of everyone's memory. Quote. Is this Tony Stark's hero complex? Joe Luo asked. This is the hero complex of every man. Tony replied. Well, Tony, it's the first time I saw you being so serious. Joe Luo shrugged and laughed, it seems that I came right. Diaresis, why, what surprise did you bring to me? Tony's eyes lit up, and his instinct told him that this fool who always has new ideas might bring him something different. Yes, some news, Joe Luo blinked at Stark. You know, I was still at S.H.I.E.L.D. I checked some information. Your father, Howard Stark, he used to study this thing. He pointed his finger at Arc Reactor. Then he definitely didn't study anything famous. Tony Stark smiled triumphantly, as if he was complacent about surpassing his father. No, Joe Luo shook his head, cruelly breaking Tony's pride, your father's research is more successful than yours. It is only because of the limitations of the times that he has not been able to realize it, but if you check, he leaves it to you. You may find something about it. Perhaps so. Tony nodded noncommittantly. I will check it after I go back, but now, I think we can go out for a drink. Qian Zhao Hao. No, Zhou Luo shook his head, I see you tonight but I just don't want my good friend to die in my own hands. Staying a while longer, I might be in danger of exposure. As he spoke, he walked into the darkness. Keep a secret for me, Tony, at least during this period of time, don't tell anyone my whereabouts, if you can't do it, I will let Pepper climb into my bed without knowing it. Get off, you fool, I shall assume that I haven't seen you today. Iron Man cursed, only to hear a few jokes of laughter, and then Joe Luo's figure disappeared. What the hell does this guy want to do? Tony shook his head, no matter what Joe Luo wants to do, at least one thing he can be sure of is that the other party didn't want to harm him. For friends, this is enough. Perhaps I should really go back and look through what the old man left behind. Santa Fe Airport, New Mexico. When Joe Luo came to this sunny state full of red rock cliffs, it was already late at night. Through the newly established intelligence channel, he got the news that Mjolnir had fallen on the earth, and he knew that Thor's plot was about to begin. It happened that he had nothing to do now, so it was better to meet this god from Asgard. The most important thing is definitely, Jane Foster will definitely be there. I haven't seen her for a long time, Joe Luo misses her cooking a bit. The car that came to greet him blew its horn twice, Joe Luo got into the special car, the beam of the headlight turned around, and drove towards the private mansion that had already been booked. In about 40 minutes, Joe Luo saw Harry Osborne with an apologetic face. This young master Osborne smiled graciously, and quickly took over the backpack Joe Luo was holding, like a courteous doorman. Because of the similar age, after Joe Luo led the Osborne industry to come back to life, he gradually became familiar with the rich young master. This time Joe Luo came to Mexico, and the young man volunteered to arrange his itinerary in person. 
I wanted to pick you up at the airport, but that nonsense Norwegian drunk caused a lot of trouble. Joe Luo was a little bit dumbfounded. He threw the backpack to Harry and joked, where is the Miss Daisy who made you fascinated? Harry scratched his head. He came to New Mexico not just for a holiday. It is rich in minerals and energy and has a large number of private research and development institutions. It is undoubtedly an excellent promotion market for the smart grid project of Osborne Industries. Harry recently gradually took over the management of Osborne Industries under the advice of Joe Luo. The business talks have been quite smooth in the past few days, and many cooperations have been reached within a few days. Coincidentally, on the way, he met Jane Foster, a scientific expedition team who came to observe astronomical phenomena, and her student Daisy. The latter's lively and cheerful personality deeply attracted the feelings in the empty window. Harry of the period. Mary Jane, who was wobbly between Harry and Peter Parker, fell back to Peter Parker again this time, making Harry quite disappointed, and could only find spiritual comfort elsewhere. Daisy and Miss Jane Foster live in the camp near the old bridge town. When they were investigating the astronomical vision, they ran into the lunatic Norwegian drunk. That guy was full of nonsense, with a lofty posture. Joe Luo knew that it was Thor who had been left behind. He wounded four doctors in the hospital and two security guards who arrived after hearing the news. They were like barbarians, if it weren't for me to pay. For a sufficient amount of compensation, that guy has to squat in the police station for a week. Entering the reserved private mansion, Joe Luo sat on the sofa and listened to Harry narrating the cause and effect. Thor didn't have any cash or identification items on his body. If he didn't run into Jane Foster, he would probably be sent away. Enter the police station and repatriate as a smuggler. Then what's the matter with SHIELD's agent? Joe Luo's eyes flashed, and he didn't want to meet them yet. That group of fools said that they were investigating a security threat, leaving a check, and taking away their data records and atmospheric observation data, and many of the data were not backed up. So the indignant Master Osborne injured a black agent in order to show masculinity in front of the lovely Miss Daisy. Harry's endless voice stopped suddenly, and after a while he continued, Not only that, I also promised Daisy that I would help them get all the data equipment. Joe Luo's eyes jokingly, I guess you must have made a lot of calls to some important officials of the Ministry of National Defense, or officials of the local police station and city hall. Harry hung his head in frustration. He tried to find all the relationships, only to find that the S.H.I.E.L.D. agent ignored him at all. If he weren't considered a social celebrity with considerable status and identity, perhaps the matter would not have ended so easily. Where is the drunk who caused you a lot of trouble? I heard that there was a metal hammer falling from the sky in a crater 50 miles west of the town, and the madman hurried over excitedly. Harry curled his lips. Joe Luo's eyes flickered twice, and an inexplicable smile appeared at the corner of his mouth, go, let's go over and take a look. In the outskirts of Old Bridge Town, a tall and strong blonde man lurked secretly on a low hill. The darkness of the night and the overgrown weeds prevented him from being spotted by the professionally trained black agents. Thor stared at the strong fortress not far away his weapon and status symbol, Mjolnir, named, Mjolnir, lying quietly in the pit. Just stay here, don't walk around. Once I get my things, I will return what they took to you. The blonde man promised Jane who sent him over. No, Jane shook her head and refused. She pointed to the heavily guarded fortress. Look at there, do you think you can walk in with a sway, get my things, and walk out safe and sound? No. I will fly out. The blonde man ignored Jane's worry. Once he got the hammer back, he naturally didn't need to fear a group of mortals. Since he was relegated to Midgard Earth by his father, Thor has been no different from a mortal, and he has even been treated as a lunatic by those ignorant humans. If it weren't for accidental news of the crater, he was still in a small town in New Mexico fainted and at a loss. Without the power of roar to conjure rain and fly to the sky, Thor found himself struggling and looked at the makeshift structure. The small fortress, feeling the familiar energy fluctuations, his heart was slightly hot. It was Thor's weapon and symbolized the supreme glory of Asgard. The magnetic field fluctuates violently, sir, the index has exceeded the upper limit. In the temporary monitoring room, the data on various instruments rose. Shield experts immediately discovered the abnormality and reported to Phil Coulson behind him. Someone invaded. Warning, illegal intrusion. 
Phil Coulson quickly looked over. On the surveillance video, a tall and strong blonde man rushed into the restricted area drawn by S.H.I.E.L.D. Several agents who wanted to stop were knocked to the ground. Relying on extraordinary strength and innately trained combat instinct, Thor rushed all the way, broke through the blockade of the black agent, and finally grasped the metal warhammer. When a heavy rain came suddenly, the big raindrops hit Thor's face, and his joyful smile gradually solidified. Even if he exhausted all his strength, the warhammer remained motionless, heavy like a mountain. Father, is this your punishment for me? Or do you think I don't deserve Mjolnir's power? The frustrated Thor roared up to the sky, half kneeling in the mud. The show is over, Barton, you don't have to shoot. Phil Coulson, who had been watching the surveillance video carefully, gave instructions. Standing on a high place, Hawkeye, who shoots a bow and arrows, disappears into the dark, watching the black agent drag the madman-like blonde man away. The stars are dim, and dark clouds cover the sky. Joe Luo stood alone on the balcony, the breeze blowing on his face, like the sound of air drawn by roar. In the extreme distance, thick dark clouds were torn apart by lightning, and violent energy fluctuations burst out. Thinking of what happened on the original timeline, he couldn't help but laugh. Maybe Thor is now being treated as an illegally invaded mercenary, being imprisoned and detained by the agent. While his thoughts were floating, the reckless Harry rushed in, as if something serious had happened, with a trace of anxiety on his face. Half an hour ago, Jane insisted on rescuing Thor who had been taken away. In the astronomical photo she took a few days ago, she saw a vague figure of a human figure and thought that the blonde man had said it maybe it was true. And Dr. Selvig, who was invited to assist in the investigation, felt that Thor was just a nonsense liar or a tramp. Besides, he knew how terrible S.H.I.E.L.D. was. It's not for the sake of knowing strangers in less than a few days. Let Jane go. Adventure. Joe Luo suddenly felt a headache. For certain purposes, he didn't go to see Jane the first time. He didn't expect to let her run like this. Maybe it would cause more troubles. You let our people the team members who have received the most professional training in the world, embarrassed like a group of supermarket security guards with minimum wages. Tell me, where are you trained? Who do you work for? Phil Coulson tried to interrogate Thor, but the big man opposite was like a wooden man without saying a word, and did not respond to Phil Coulson's words. The way you fight is more like a mercenary. Did you learn it in South Africa? Don't force me to use some special methods to pry your mouth open. Believe me, many of us here are very good at it, and the taste is not its uncomfortable. Phil Coulson stared at the blonde man who was silently like a sculpture, his face was desperate. He was sure that he hadn't got much useful news so far, and then turned and left. The moment the door was closed, a handsome man in a long black trench coat was projected on the glass mirror, tall and thin, exuding evil charm. Loki, why are you here? Torden was surprised, what happened? Tell me, is it Jotunheim? Let me explain to my father. Father is dead. Loki's eyes are full of sadness. This is the change and deception he is best at. The expulsion of you, the threat of war, makes him unbearable. You don't have to blame yourself. I know you love him and I have tried to persuade him, but he can't listen, knowing that you can't pick up Mjolnir and put it next to you, it's really cruel. Odin at the moment was already in deep sleep, so Loki took advantage of the vacancy and took the king's scepter, temporarily taking the place of the king. Now the burden of the throne rests on my shoulders. The condition of the truce with Jotunheim is to exile you forever, and your mother will not allow you to go home. I'm here to say goodbye, brother, I'm sorry. Loki is full of emotion and full of emotion. With strong emotions, he deceived Thor very easily. No, it's me who should apologize, thank you for being here to see me. A trace of sadness flashed across Thor's face, and a bit of relief. Loki turned around, a smile appeared on his face, but his figure was gradually disappearing. Goodbye, Thor looked at Loki's figure gradually disappearing into the air, like a phantom. Goodbye, Phil Coulson, who just walked in, had weird eyes. I just came back, Dr. Donald. It's hard to believe that a doctor has such excellent fighting skills, Dr. Donald Black, I heard that you were an enthusiast of Norse mythology. Do you think the thing that fell in the crater is the hammer used by Thor in the myth? Doctor, you it's time to go to the psychiatric department. Phil Coulson walked in, as if the original question was answered, 
He did not treat Thor with the intruder's cold attitude, but smiled gently, your friend is waiting for you outside, Dr. Donald, next time you drink less alcohol. This is good for you and everyone else. Thor walked out with a confused look. He saw some people he had just met recently, Jane, Daisy, Dr. Selvig, Harry. Hi, Dr. Donald, it's nice to meet you. Harry stepped forward with a big smile and enthusiasm, as if he had met an old friend he hadn't seen in years. With the name of Osborne Industry, Harry succeeded in getting Phil Coulson to agree to release Thor after negotiating with Phil Coulson, and by the way, he returned all the research materials and equipment. Even if I heard that the blonde man who rushed in was actually a Norse doctor and a fan of Norse mythology, this sounded far-fetched reason alone. The old and cunning Phil Coulson knew that this inexplicable intruder was left behind, and he could not get more useful information. As for the data about the astronomical vision, S.H.I.E.L.D. has already been backed up, and there is no redundant use value. So it's better to give this group of people a chance to see if there are any unexpected gains, as he once said by a nasty colleague from the East, put a long line to catch a big fish. Thinking of the missing colleague who sometimes made him hateful, but most of the time his senses were good, Phil Coulson couldn't help sighing. Until now, he also firmly believes that Joe Luo is absolutely not dead. How can a little fool like him die so easily? A muddy, gray-headed Thor figured out the situation of at the moment, no longer the arrogant posture before, experienced the blow of the inability to pick up the hammer, and the bad news of Loki's arrival, the once haughty prince seemed to be too a lot of changes have taken place. Thank you for helping me get back the research materials. Jane thanked Harry sincerely. It's all someone's idea. Harry blinked at Jane with a grin, but didn't explain anything. Anyway, she was about to see Joe Luo in a while, and he didn't need him to explain anything. Jane, confused by Harry's answer, followed the group back to the private residence. Oh my goodness, Joe, it's you. Jane, who was invited upstairs alone, saw the person she had dreamed of countless times in her dream, and she was surprised and delighted that she even thought she hadn't woken up yet. Trance. It's me, dear. Joe Luo stepped up and wrapped her waist intimately, how have you been? Oh, it's okay, ah, ah. There was no time to finish what Jane said, so Joe Luo blocked him back, so she had to change to a more intense and primitive way to express her miss for the other party. Hey, friend, what is Jane doing upstairs? She's been upstairs for a long time. After washing herself, Thor asked Harry with some doubts about the whereabouts of the mortal woman that she gradually became interested in. She's recounting the old with an old friend, you know, this kind of thing always takes a while. Harry blinked narrowly at him and raised his glass. Ha ha, my friend, let me tell you that the wine in the world is too weak and the taste is too bad. If I have the opportunity, I will ask you to taste the fine wine from Asgard, which is the treasure of my father. If you drink that kind of wine, you will know that all you used to drink were distilled water with alcohol. I don't think so. Thor, maybe you can go to the country in the east to see what is really good wine. Joe Luo shrugged, looking at this big guy who drinks like water, and again a large glass of wine poured into his mouth. You must be joking. I am number one in Asgard's wine world. Mortal, your vision is too short and you don't know how vast the world is. When I return to Asgard, oh no, I can't go back to Asgard, ooh, ooh, I cannot go back, Asgard has put me permanently exiled, ooh, ooh. This Thor, who had lost his supernatural power, could no longer have a mortal body without being drunk like before. Coupled with the annoyance of sadness, the strong man of 1.9 meters and 90 meters even covered his face and burst into tears. Don't be like this, my friend, there is a saying in the East that there must be a way to get to the mountain by a car. The boat will be straight at the end of the bridge. Don't give up at any time. If you have any troubles in your heart, don't let me know, we are friend, isn't it? Joe Luo persuaded Thor, while holding his camera to, click, click, and take pictures like crazy. The future king of Asgard, the proud Thor Thor, would have this scene of being drunk and distressed like a little girl. It's memorable. And because Thor, who was too drunk and unaware of all this, began to talk to Joe Luo about his distress in his heart, the injustice he suffered, his grand ambition, his. Ding. After the host casually flicked, guide Thor out of depression and start a lifelong hobby, chat LV1. Thor. Talk LV1, zero fifths. Joe Luo. Ha ha ha, this is really unexpected. 
While Zhou Luo comforted Thor casually, he silently mourned Thor in Awakening's lifelong hobby, and he didn't know whether it was good or bad for him. This special person design has gone wrong. This is clearly Deadpool's lifelong hobby. After Thor was completely drunk and unconscious, Zhou Luo took the camera back to his room, selected a picture of Thor from it, and began to use his skills. Ding! Extract the character Thor skills, it is recommended to extract the power of thunder and lightning. Ding! Extract 20% of Thor's skills and automatically focus on the thunder and lightning power, and the host gains 20% of Thor's thunder and lightning power. Oh oh oh, waves of electric light floated from Joe Luo's body, and even his eyes started to emit electric light. The blood from the Esir Protoss containing lightning power was flowing crazily in his body, making him extremely strong. His body gets strengthening again. Joe Luo stretched out his hand, and a trace of electricity jumped between his fingers. The power of thunder and lightning, if you use it well, it will be great, as if thinking of something interesting, Joe Luo's mouth raised a wicked smile, ha 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 ha. At noon the next day, four Asgardians dressed in strange costumes walked into Old Bridge Town. Their strange costumes attracted the attention of pedestrians passing by. They were dressed in medieval-like vintage armor with axes, swords and shields. It's like running out of the set of Lord of the Rings. The residents of the town looked at this strange combination and wondered if there was a renaissance festival going on in the town, but the three Asgard warriors and the female warrior Sif from Asgard didn't realize it. They thought it was just behind the world. His human knowledge is crude, and he has never seen a brave soldier from outside the territory. In the eyes of these Asgardians, the impression of the earth still remains in the ancient barbaric era. At that time, humans lived a primitive life of hunting and gregariousness, and they had not yet developed a technological civilization. What's more, Asgard has always regarded itself as the protector of the Nine Realms, and believed that the Nine Kingdoms in this galaxy all depended on their shelter and protection in order to have a peaceful life. It stands to reason that Maurnir came to this place, and Thor should be here too. How about looking for a few Midgardians as our guide? A man with the appearance of a swordsman made a proud suggestion. Loki has ascended the throne of Asgard, but Thor is the real candidate for the king. I definitely don't want to surrender to the conspirators. Sif, the heroic female warrior, shouted. In her heart, only Thor, who is brave and brave, is worthy of becoming Asgard's true future king. But where should we find Thor? Vasta asked gruffly, walking ahead. This strong man carrying an axe, with thick golden red hair, coupled with a rough appearance, makes him look like he is playing a role in a fantasy world. The Asgard Quartet, who stayed in place for a while, found that more and more residents were onlookers, and some people were taking photos with their mobile phones. The flashing light once made them think it was some kind of magic or weapon. Fortunately, there is no embarrassment of language barriers between the two worlds. The female warrior Sif took the lead and asked a small town resident who was watching, Midgardians, we are from Asgard, come to look for Odin's son, the brave and wise leader Thor. A series of prefixes made the other party dizzy, and a burst of laughter broke out in the crowd of onlookers. They all thought that these four, medieval characters, were a group of Norse mythology enthusiasts, and they were performing a performance similar to a comic show. Report to the command center. We saw Princess Xena, Robinson, and the Samurai. The two shield field agents gnawing at Hamburg, saw the Asgard Quartet walking into the town, and joked to the officer, report. At the same time, 20 minutes ago, in S.H.I.E.L.D.'s temporary command post, the data monitoring center received a huge amounts of energy signal. Although it only lasted for an extremely short moment, it was still located at specific coordinates, 10 to the northwest of the town. Somewhere 5 miles away. Phil Coulson immediately led a group of agents to the destination, but they were left with only a complicated and obscure weird symbol, like a special ancient language. Get a professional linguist. Phil Coulson ordered Hill Waiter, a bald agent wearing glasses. According to the first-hand data obtained from Jane, S.H.I.E.L.D. suspects that the root cause of the atmospheric abnormality is caused by the huge amounts of energy impacting the space. Perhaps someone is conducting some secret experiments. However, their suspicions were soon overturned. The sunny weather last moment was hidden by dark clouds. The huge funnel-shaped vortex stirred up the airflow, forming a huge amount of smoke column. In the sand and dust, the plume of smoke slowly dissipated like a huge tornado. Phil Coulson, who was hiding behind the car, 
saw a specific type of huge amounts of metal armor, like a silver white giant, standing on the ground as if it appeared out of thin air, the whole body shone with cold light. Is this a new toy made by Stark? Phil Coulson was dumbfounded, unable to believe his eyes. As if sensing something, the metal armor strode heavy and ran towards the town. The shield agent blocking the front has no resistance in front of such non-man-made objects, and the firearms cannot even penetrate the metal surface. Huge amounts of the destroyer opened his visor, violent and intense energy gathered, and hot rays spewed out like fire. The roar was endless, and the residents of the small town also found an abnormal situation. Soon people saw this silver-white giant full of metallic texture. Destroyer, Thor, who had just reunited with his followers, had a solemn expression. He instantly recognized that this silver-white giant was actually a giant armor with powerful divine power and was originally indestructible. I have to restore my divine power, or I won't be able to defeat it at all. Thor tried this kind of helpless frustration for the first time in his life. Go and take Daisy and the others away. Joe Luo patted Harry on the shoulder and told him to leave. He took the opportunity to go to another place. His goal is the Mjolnir who, only qualified people can pick up. He came to the empty temporary command post of S.H.I.E.L.D. Phil Coulson is leading a group of agents to evacuate the residents of the town. Those who are left behind are civilians. He entered here easily. The guards on the patrol seemed to turn a blind eye to the stranger. Only Hawkeye Barden, who was staring at the surveillance screen, noticed something wrong. Joe Luo held Mjolnir with one hand, thunder and lightning surged in his body, fine cracks appeared on the ground, and a strong repulsive force burst out from the core of the hammer. The vast energy emptied like a huge wave, and the strong fortress built temporarily by shield was instantly hit by the overflowing energy frenzy. In the spiritual world, a majestic and tall one-eyed old man gradually emerged, his illusory figure solidified and turned into a golden glow, looking down at the humble mortal who tried to offend the majesty of the gods. Mortal, put it down, Asgard's artifact, don't allow humble people to blaspheme. The magnificent voice came from all directions, turning into a rolling coercion, shaking Joe Luo's spiritual will. A pair of vicissitudes and wisdom eyes slowly opened, penetrating the barriers of time and space, and the illusory figure projected from beyond the distant star field, condensed into a mighty old man wearing a golden armor and a golden helmet. He is holding the famous gun, Gangner, and the only single eye is shining with cold light. Joe Luo smiled slightly, ignoring Odin's stern scolding, just a duplication, not enough to make him pay too much respect. The Phoenix Force erupted, creating the most direct collision with Odin's projection on the spiritual level. Odin's will was strongly impacted, and the condensed human image was like a water wave, rippling with subtle ripples. Odin, who had just woke up from a deep sleep, didn't expect this seemingly humble Midgard to have a powerful force capable of resisting the gods. Joe Luo smiled softly, his spirit condensed into a sharp long cone with amazing penetrating power. Odin's virtual image was like a dreamy bubble, which was gently pierced and dissipated. This is a little trick he learned from Professor X, and it seems to work well for Odin who was interrupted from sleep. No matter who drives this hammer, anyone who is qualified can get the power of Thor. Joe Luo muttered these words in a low voice, and the thunder and lightning power in his body exploded again. Boom, the sky was densely covered with dark clouds, the thunder blasted, dazzling electric lights shining endlessly, Huge power of the thunder and lightning crazily poured into Joe Luo's body from Mjolnir, and the shining armor and cloak were automatically blessed on him. Joe Luo smiled faintly, and Mjolnir standing on the crater was picked up casually, no longer the heavy and stagnant before, on the light hammer, thunder and lightning overflowed. This is the reason why Mjolnir is truly called an artifact. It originally has the characteristics of being indestructible, super energy tolerant, huge amounts of quality and the ability of controlling magnetic field, as well as the powerful Thor power that gives the holder. Thor only played a part of his function, and he has become one of the most powerful people in Asgard. The battle in the town became more and more fierce. The destroyer made everyone almost unable to raise their heads. The scorching heat ray that rushed towards Thor slowly stagnated in the void, and the space channel was like a huge vortex, slowly expanding and opening. The figure in golden armor is about to land. Odin. A roar interrupted Odin's arrival. A tall giant with dark blue skin flashed in the light and shadow. It was Loth, 
the king of the giants of Jotunheim who lived deep in Jotunheim, and Odin's lifelong enemy. After Loki learned of his life experience, he secretly colluded with the giants of Jotunheim, opened the space channel of Asgard, and put in a large amount of giants of Jotunheim to deal with the sleeping adoptive father. Burning heat ray paused for an instant, Thor turned over and escaped the fatal blow. He raised his head to look at the energy storing destroyer, his eyes revealed a touch of determination, and he strode towards the center of the battlefield. Brother, no matter what I did to make you angry, no matter what the reason made you do these things, I am extremely sorry and stop fighting for nothing. Come on, take my life and end it all. Thor calmly approached the destroyer, and at this moment he chose to sacrifice himself to save others. Sitting on the throne, Loki did not speak. He turned to look at the fierce fighting sound coming from the back of the dormitory. The king of giants of Jotunheim and the king of Asgard, the supreme kings of the two kingdoms, were engaged in a thrilling battle. The destroyer turned around. Before Thor had time to be happy, the giant armor raised his hand to fly Thor out, and the heat that had been accumulated for a long time gushed out. Ha, huh, how did she get in? Within Joe Luo's sensing range, Jane Foster rushed into the battlefield, looking around, as if looking for someone's trace. When that burning heat ray kills Thor, it will affect her and burn this lovely girl to ashes. Hold it. A familiar voice rang in her ears, almost subconsciously, Jane stretched out her hand, and a hammer entangled with electricity fell from the sky and fell into her palm. Joe, you really are here, are you okay? Jane didn't even bother to see what she was holding, but shouted with surprise on her face. Oh, did she rush in to find me? Joe Luo's eyes flashed, a rare touch flashed in his eyes, but disappeared without a trace in the next moment. The surging power rushed out, blocking the hot fire from the lacing shot, Jane seemed to be driven, swinging a hammer and smashing it down. Before the destroyer had time to resist, he was hit by that magnificent force. The indestructible metal body fell apart in an instant and turned into fragments. The dark clouds dispersed, the fighting subsided, and the brilliant sun shone on the earth again, and Jane stood there blankly, not knowing what had happened. The aftermath of the battle has dissipated, the fire on the streets is rising, the houses and buildings are full of thick black smoke, the destroyers have great destructive power, and under the control of Loki, they are launching heat ray unscrupulously. Unleashing destructive power. The town was in a mess and dilapidated. In the ruins, Jane stared at the metal warhammer in her hand, still not recovering from the shock. Thor and the four Asgardians on the side were even more stunned. Others might not understand what it means to pick up Mjolnir, but they can understand the meaning. A female Midgard actually lifted Mjolnir and defeated the powerful armor made by Odin. Fandral yelled incredulously. He used to despise the backward humans in this world, but what happened now is like a slap in the face. Thor has lost all his looks. Mjolnir has always been a symbol of his reputation for bravery. His father even said that whoever picks up this hammer can be qualified to rule Asgard. It is conceivable that this for Thor, for Asgard, what a great significance. She, father, why is this? Thor muttered to himself, staring at Jane who was standing still in the ruins. The tiny electric light lingered on the woman, making her look like a Valkyrie with awe-inspiring and inviolable temperament. When everyone hadn't figured out the situation, a huge beam of light descended from the sky, bringing the exiled Prince Asgard back to the realm of God. At the same time, the three warriors of Asgard and the female warrior Sif were also taken away by Bifrost's transmission channel, far away in the king's palace in Asgard. Odin looked at Loki who fell on his knees, with a vague remorse in his heart. He has always regarded Thor as the future heir to the kingdom, but he has given his adopted children too much unrealistic hope. Once the seeds of ambition take root in his heart, desire is difficult to contain. You and Thor are both natural kings, but the ruler of Asgard can only be one person. Odin looked at Loki with a drooping head emotionally, you are the descendants of the giants of Jotunheim, Lofs. Son, I originally hoped that through you, I could reach a peace agreement with Jotunheim for generations. Enough, you let me ignite the flames of hope, but you extinguished it cruelly. From the beginning to the end, you never thought of giving me a chance, Thor is the king in your mind. Seeing that his adopted son was still obsessed with understanding, Odin sighed. He could only put him in the prison of the gods, where he might be able to calm and sober Loki, who was blinded by power. 
The old face of the king of Asgard was full of exhaustion, and the constant high-intensity fighting made Odin a little tired, and his tall and mighty body shook slightly. Loki looked at the opportunity, with his hands behind his back, a square blue box quietly emerged, and the ice treasure box containing infinite frost and cold air suddenly opened. Driven by Loki's original giants of Jotunheim bloodline, it is said that a powerful artifact capable of freezing a world, blooming with terrible power. Even if it was the king of God Odin, he was condensed into a frost statue unexpectedly, spitting out frost and cold air from the ice treasure box, temporarily restraining him. Loki rushed out of Asgard in an instant and rushed to Bifrost, which connects the Nine Realms. Now that Lof, the king of the giants of Jotunheim, is dead, it is a good time to start a war between Asgard and Jotunheim. And he will take advantage of the moment when giants of Jotunheim invades Asgard and use Bifrost's power to destroy Jotunheim in one fell swoop. The people of this kingdom will soon know that he is more trustworthy than Thor. Arriving at the observatory at the end of Bifrost, Asgard's janitor Heimdall also failed to stop Loki. The ice treasure box froze the opponent into an ice sculpture. He held the heavy sword, and the colorful beam of energy went straight through Jotunheim. The other end runs through the giant palace of Jonheim. Loki has reached an agreement with Lof, the king of giants of Jotunheim. When the opponent kills Odin, it will open the space channel so that the giants of Jotunheim can invade and completely capture Asgard to support him on the throne. Although Loki's actual plan is not so, but Lof is dead anyway, it is better to make mistakes and introduce giants of Jotunheim into Asgard to divert Odin's attention, and he uses Bifrost as the final weapon to tear apart the frost-covered extremely cold world. When Thor returned to Asgard, he saw a group of giants of Jotunheim rushing out from the other side of the passage, fighting fiercely with the Asgard guards on Bifrost, and Loki was controlling the energy beam that penetrates the Nine Realms, preparing to use it as an action Jotunheim's powerful weapon. Diarasis, what are you doing, Loki? Thor asked the three Asgard warriors and Sif to join the fight, and he asked his brother loudly, destroying a race, destroying a world, this will make Asgard an enemy of the Nine Realms. Thor tried to dissuade his brother who had gone astray. Bifrost's beam of energy continues to expand, stimulating even more huge amounts of destructive power. Loki stepped off the control center, and he smiled triumphantly, no one can stop me now, not even my father. Thor waved his warhammer to rush up, trying to stop the crazy Loki, but a group of light and shadow illusions deceived him, and he was stabbed by the proud money Loki. You still cheat like this. Before Loki's words fell, Thor shook his hammer backhand, and the violent electric current threw out like a whip, knocking Loki away. Looking at the beam of energy bursting from Bifrost, even Thor couldn't do anything. Loki fell to the ground and smiled sadly. Even if you are so powerful, you can only watch Jotunheim break and die. Thor looked at all of this, with a decision in his heart, he raised Mjolnir, and struggling to smash it down at Bifrost. Wanjin Thunder hit the extremely sturdy Bifrost, and the dazzling light burst, huge amounts of energy tide was like a tsunami, and the whole Asgard was trembling. The two Asgard princes were swept high in the sky by the turbulent energy. Odin hurried over and grabbed Thor's red cloak, while Loki followed the scattered fragments of Bifrost and fell towards the dark abyss that engulfed everything. Phil Coulson, returning from New Mexico, pushes the door into Nick Fury's office. He was looking through several documents. It was a document file from Old Bridge Town. It reported all the events in detail but many details still need to be completed by Phil Coulson who has personally experienced it. I heard that you met the legendary figure in Norse mythology in New Mexico. Fury knocked on the table. I hope this group of people came to Earth with kindness. They claimed to be Asgardians to look for the lost prince, Thor, and the metal hammer that fell on the outskirts of New Mexico, called Mjolnir, is a powerful artifact cast by Dwarf. When I heard these words at first, I thought they were a group of lunatics who were passionate about Norse mythology, but what happened later made me unable to believe all this. Phil Coulson shared his experience in New Mexico. This is the first time that human beings have come into contact with civilized creatures outside the Earth. Nick Fury listened very carefully. In other words, they didn't have any malicious intentions. It was just because Asgard had a power struggle that they came to Earth. Nick Fury asked suspiciously. He has always been very wary of those civilized races that are still unknown and powerful. It can be understood that, 
apart from being as arrogant as Tony Stark, they are actually quite talkative. Phil Coulson shrugged, and the middle-aged agent paused, with hesitation on his face. In a small town in New Mexico, I seem to find that an acquaintance. Who is it? Looking at Phil Coulson's hesitation, Nick Fury suddenly became interested. Joe Luo. Phil Coulson hesitation repeatedly, and finally hesitated to say the name. What, are you sure? Nick Fury stood up suddenly, it's really him. No, I'm not sure. Phil Coulson shook his head. How to say, it can only be a feeling, as if you are walking on a street full of people and passing by someone, you suddenly feel that person is a bit familiar, and the person who turned around is gone. Sometimes we need to trust our intuition. The Black Chief's only one eye exuded an inexplicable look, I want you to investigate this matter, there must be a result. I see. Coelson took a deep breath and nodded. After SHIELD's rectification and reform, his current position has been promoted again, and he has learned more secrets, and he has become more aware of the meaning and value of his former colleague. Very good. Nick Fury was satisfied with Phil Coulson's attitude. The female scientist who has picked up the hammer, have you controlled it? Phil Coulson shook his head. She has been taken away by Osborne Industries, we are one step late, and I heard she used to and Joe, wait. At this point, both of them stared, and they seemed to have found a clue inadvertently. Check from here, Nick Fury made a decisive decision, also, bring Dr. Selvig, maybe he is more useful to us. I see, Phil Coulson agreed, turned and walked outside. He had found the direction and definitely planned his next move. A private jet headed above the clouds, and the golden afterglow of the sunset fell on the sea of tumbling clouds, like pure white silk dotted with a touch of gold. After cooperating with S.H.I.E.L.D. to conduct a series of confession records, Harry returned to New York by the way, along with them were Jane and Daisy, and Dr. Selvig. As for Joe Luo, he was not willing to meet with S.H.I.E.L.D. for the time being, so he chose another way to go back. When both parties returned, under Joe Luo's persuasion, Jane stayed in Osborne Industry and began to plan to use this experience to sort out her theoretical data for publication. Regarding space teleportation and outer space life, it will definitely cause a big sensation after its publication. I don't know if it will cause panic among humans. Joe Luo thought maliciously. The current Osborne Industry, after Joe Luo came up with the list, gradually attracted a large number of talents, such as the Spider-Man's old enemy Dr. Octopus. Because of the large amount of financial support from Osborne Industry, it is still a normal Otto Gunthio. Ketavis, and the progress of his artificial sun experiment is gratifying. Otto's artificial sun and Tony Stark's arc reactor are like two different levels of research. One is high standard, high value, and high cost, and the other is oriented towards civilianization and popularization. Stark Industries is now targeting the new energy industry, and through its huge volume, it has smashed a bloody road in the blockade of the traditional energy tycoon, which has opened up a new situation in the energy market. Joe Luo is also ready to follow the trend and follow Stark to launch Dr. Otto's artificial sun, which is more affordable in terms of price and technology, to occupy the lower-end market with a larger population at one time. Thinking of the information received, Perhaps because of Joe Luo's reminder that Tony, who has solved his own problems, is going to participate in the club activities of formula racing, Joe Luo couldn't help but smile, he has to thank me again. This time Tony will no longer meet his old opponent, the, wandering whip, the bearded man with tattoos, who is now in New York, waiting to meet Joe Luo. Two hours later, Joe Luo sat in the office to greet the visitors. Gwen acted as the secretary, and the leader, Vanky and his son, entered the office. Welcome you too, Joe Luo smiled faintly, holding the old man's hand gently, I've heard of your name, a genius who is talented enough to keep pace with Howard Stark. Hearing the enemy's name, the weak old man grabbed Joe Luo's arm abruptly. He used to be a physicist in the former Soviet Union, and later defected to the United States and met Howard Stark, who had already established a military empire at that time. They were committed to developing more powerful energy sources for the production of huge amounts of new weapons. But four years later, Anton Vanke was accused of being a spy and was forcibly expelled. He returned to Mao Shang country and lost everything, regardless of scientific research achievements or reputation. This physicist, who can be called a genius, leads a poor life, especially the experience of working for the United States government, which makes him almost unable to move. 
I never thought that one day I could set foot on this land again. The old man's trembling voice contained deep resentment and resentment. I have known your story. There are always many injustices in the world. Fate has always seldom favored those who are truly talented. Joe Luo said like a spring breeze, I also went from nothing to today, so I can understand. Your pain, Dr. Vanke, a new future will be waiting for you. Thank you, Mr. Joe. The old man's face was full of gratitude. He took the son aside and introduced, This is my son, Ivan. He has a higher ability than me, although he has been dishonorable. Experience, but I assure God that Ivan will never cause you trouble. The big Russian man who was as strong as a bear, squatted down, he was like a tame lamb in front of the thin old man, trying his best to suppress the precarious and dangerous aura. I have learned about Ivan's past. He used to resell weapon-grade plutonium materials and was sentenced to 15 years in Kopesk prison, but these are not important. Which young man can't make mistakes? I did it a few years ago. I've had a lot of turmoil, but now I think of it like a joke. Joe Luo looked at the muscular Ivan Vanke, the villain in Iron Man 2, the talent he really fancied, and the killer used to win military orders. Accompanying the elderly Anton Vanke to greet for a while, Gwen pushed the old man back to the lounge. The long-distance travel, coupled with the originally weak body, made the other party seem like a candle in the wind, which would be extinguished at any time. There were only two people left in the office. Ivan no longer concealed his fierce arrogance. He looked directly at Joe Luo as if looking at his prey. I am not the kind of person who can be deceived and bought. Take some money and then it would be too simple to be able to exchange my father's life's hard work. No, don't you understand? Why is your father so happy? Because what I give you is not money, but a chance to prove yourself again. Joe Luo didn't care about the rudeness of this big Russian man. Also, your father is more because of you. He feels that he owes you too much, and here can make you stand out and make up for the guilt accumulated in his heart over the years, do you understand? I can promise that all our transactions are fair. What I signed with you is not a deed. If you feel unsatisfied, you can leave at any time. Joe Luo stretched out his hand and shook hands with Yifan, who was a little moved. I wish we have a good cooperation. The young man let go, with a smile on his face. The United States White Palace, Oval Office. In the Baroque office, Stryker sits on the sofa. He always seems to be his own way. At the moment, he looks very regular, leaning half of his body forward, like a soldier who can get up when he is ordered. Due to Magneto's blatant attack on Watsonton, the mutant issue has once again become a hot topic for fishing vessels. In Stryker's eyes, this is simply an excellent opportunity given by God. The failure of the last attack on Xavier Academy made him a big shame, but Watsonton's sudden collapse gave him another excellent opportunity. William, I read the mutant defense plan you handed over. You are a top expert in dealing with this group of people. The president mused and asked, Your weapon, team, how is it formed? How is it? It's almost done. Stryker replied immediately. He had a, Weapon X, plan a long time ago, using mutant's ability to create his, ultimate weapon. Wolverine Logan is one of his proud works. Unfortunately, because of the failure of brainwashing, the fierce loneliness the wolf escaped. The president nodded in satisfaction. He hesitated and said, I give you the power of search, detention, and interrogation, but don't let me see reports of injuries to mutant children on the news at six in the morning. Stryker suppressed the excitement in his heart. The colonel, who was so serious and unkind, finally saw the hope of fulfilling his wish. William, after giving the sweet dates, the president warned with a serious face, this is not your action alone. Whether it fails or succeeds, I need to be foolproof. Don't have any accidents. Stryker understands that this is both a requirement and a warning. If there is any accident, he will be the scapegoat introduced by the big shot, and no one will come forward to protect him. The sudden chill spread in his body, like a basin of cold water extinguishing the joy and longing before, but he still firmly reported his plan to the president. This time, the reason why he was able to approve this action under the premise that he had just failed recently was because he had obtained a secret weapon a mutant that turned mutant into an ordinary person. The little boy named Jimmy possesses the mutation-inhibiting gene, which makes all nearby mutant lose the ability of the mutant. 
Stryker used the genes extracted from his body to successfully produce a variant gene inhibitor and regarded it as the biggest killer against mutant. With such a weapon, any mutant will become vulnerable. Stryker's eyes flashed a little fiery. Xavier Genius School. Chin pushed the old man in the wheelchair and walked in the wide school. The bright sunshine penetrated the clouds and fell between the lawn and the tree shade. Jin, you, Kurt, Aurora and the others, go to Los Angeles to find a mutant named Kurt Wagner. He is a circus performer who can move instantaneously. The professor put his hands on his knees and exhorted. He asked the academy for help, saying that the military was arresting him and wanted Eric and the Brotherhood members. We can't just ignore it. Need to dispatch so many people. Chin was a little worried, because the last time the school was attacked, she now doesn't trust the security issues here as much as before. The professor nodded. He was worried that there would be a conflict with the military, so he sent out the younger generation of X-Men. With the strength of these students, even if they encounter Brotherhood, there will be no harm. It's a pity that Logan isn't here. He's looking for his own memory. Charles sighed. If Wolverine is still at school, nothing will happen. Washington, D.C., Secret Operations Command Center. According to the photos taken by satellite, Stryker saw that the Blackbird fighter plane at Xavier School had already taken off. He was proud of himself and mobilized the powerful young mutant, and the next step was to deal with Charles. The White Palace sent an invitation to Professor X, asking him to come over to discuss the dispute between humans and mutant. The unguarded professor readily agreed, but it was a little troublesome that the other party brought a burly beast covered in blue hair. If there is no mutant inhibitor, Beast Hank, who is powerful and brilliant, might give Stryker's plan. Bringing variables, but now everything is not a problem. I don't think you should come here, Charles. As an old man at the same time as the professor, Beast Hank is wary of humans to a certain extent. Peace needs to be won by yourself, Hank. The professor kept smiling. He tried to check with psychic ability. Although these Secret Service bodyguards were full of hostility, they were only aimed at the mutant group, enter. McCoy pushed his wheelchair into a reception room in the White Palace. The secretary delivered two cups of coffee and said softly, please wait a moment, Mr. President will be there soon. Watching the secretary push the door to leave, McCoy squeezed in the sofa vaguely felt something wrong, the wall of the room suddenly opened many small holes, a large amount of ether gas sprayed in, turned into a faint mist, and quickly dispersed. The professor's eyes flickered, and the spiritual ability spread out like water waves, not yet completely radiating outward, the harsh sound waves penetrate the barriers of the room, stirring the brain like a sharp knife. The bald old man instantly covered his head and dissipated the mental power that manipulated the spirit. McCoy reacted and picked up the sofa and slammed it against the wall with a muffled sound. The wall was intact. McCoy jumped to the door like a beast and pulled open the door panel like a piece of paper. He saw a group of heavily armed soldiers squeezing outside the door. Several sharp needles pierced into the skin and cold liquid poured in. McCoy's voice suddenly weakened, and even the blue hair on his body gradually faded and disappeared. Before he had time to be surprised, he fell into a coma and fell down. The professor's consciousness was dizzy for a while, he tried his best to open his eyelids and saw an officer strode in and put some kind of metal instrument on him. The mind and will that could extend indefinitely suddenly seemed to be isolated and blocked, as if a tall adult was locked in a small cage, and an unprecedented feeling of uncomfortable feeling swept through the whole body. William, before the consciousness entered the darkness, the professor saw a cold face, and he knew the man, William Stryker. The ticking sound of water drops awakened the sleeping professor. He opened his eyes, his blurred vision gradually became clear, and a figure walked out of the darkness. William, he called out the other person's name. The professor felt the weird instrument on his head, reflecting that humans had found a way to restrain their strength. This thing is called a neurosuppressor, and it's enough to prevent you from being able to perform ability. Stryker pointed to the brain and smiled triumphantly, Charles, isn't this week feeling good? What do you think of Hank? The professor asked anxiously, thinking of his partner who came to the White Palace with him. He should thank me, Stryker sneered, I let him no longer have to wear that beast fur. He is now a normal person. William, why do you want to do this? The professor knew the root cause of the opponent's hatred of mutant. You want me to heal your son, but mutant does not have a disease. 
It is derived from genetic changes and is also human. Evolution. Shut up, Charles. Stryker, who remained calm, suddenly yelled at rage. His eyes were bloodshot, and he stared at the old man in the wheelchair with extremely hateful eyes. Put away your set, Charles, you turned my son into a devil. After he came back from your school, he took pleasure in torturing my wife and my thoughts. He felt that we were responsible for all this, our minds are full of illusions every day, and those screams of fear reverberate in my ears day and night. Finally, in order to get rid of the horrible illusions in my mind, my wife takes an electric drill into her temples. Colonel Stryker, who has always faced the world with a cold image, has a trembling voice with strong sorrow and hatred. He blames the professor and mutant for the tragic end of the family's disintegration. Although I hate you guys, I still have to admit that mutant is really useful sometimes. He looked at the secretary beside him with the appearance of Asian women. This bodyguard and secretary named Yuriko is also a mutant. Like Wolverine, she was also injected with adamantium alloy, codenamed Death Girl, and was also one of the experimental results of the X-Weapon project. The mutant distress signal in Los Angeles, did you deliberately release it? The clear-thinking professor suddenly woke up. Definitely, Stryker admitted frankly, well, you see, as the younger generation of mutant leaves, it will be easier for you to solve it. Stryker condescendingly looked down at the old man who did not resist ability, the famous Charles, the omnipotent soul master, now became his own prisoner. Definitely, my ultimate goal is not you, nor will it be Eric Lancel, what I have to do is to kill mutant. The time I deal with mutant is not shorter than you, but the most worrying thing is that you never know how many mutants are in the world and how to find them, a cold look is reflected behind the glasses, except you, Charles. If you really want to find out the mutant one by one, and then kill them all, even Stryker, who is strongly supported by the White Palace and the military, will be difficult to do. However, there is one exception. Charles, who wears a brainwave-strengthening machine, is enough to connect with everyone in the world. If he forces his consciousness to focus on a certain group of people, except for the same spiritual ability, other people will be affected. He kills. This is also the reason why Stryker regards the professor as a major threat. Even if Magneto can destroy a city easily, his ranking in his mind has to be lower. Unfortunately, this psychedelic potion is too little for you. Your power is much stronger, so I had to find another way. Stryker beckoned, and the soldier outside the door pushed in a man with a numb expression and a gloomy look. The other man was wearing a wide linen shirt with sutures left over after the operation on his head. Metal instruments like octopus tentacles, from the back of his head the neck is inserted in, which is shocking. Allow me to introduce to you, mutant, the fluid secreted from the brain can control other people's thoughts, but it is still in the experimental stage before. Jensen, the professor surprised Roar, he looked at Stryker incredulously, my god. William, this is your son. What did you do to him? Stryker was expressionless, no, Charles. My son is dead he is a mutant freak just like you. He glanced at the bald professor coldly and strode out of the room. He had to deal with the mutant kids in the school. After all these people were wiped out, he could free up his hands to concentrate on Magneto. As for Charles, his brain at that time will become the most powerful weapon in his hand. Colonel Stryker, who walked out of the detention room, strode forward, and a strange face passed by him, but as if he hadn't seen it, he gradually walked away without squinting his eyes. If no one beside Joe Luo walked into the detention room, dozens of soldiers guarding the door seemed to turn a blind eye to him, and there was no such person in the reflection of his eyes. In the dark and damp room, the professor wearing a neuroinhibitor with a painful expression, Jensen sitting across from him plays with the spiritual thoughts of the world's most powerful spiritual master. The bald professor who is usually used to controlling the thinking and guiding the spirit of others, for the first time tasted the horror of being surrounded by many illusions. Stop, Jason. The sharp voice cut Charles's brain like a chainsaw. In an extremely real illusion, he seemed to have returned to school. The familiar room layout and scenery made the professor unable to distinguish between false and true. Hello, professor. The clear voice resembled Hong Zhang Dalu shattering the real illusion created by Jensen. Charles felt the mental power to control his thoughts, suddenly receding like a tide. 
He opened his eyes at and found a familiar young man sitting in front of him, and Jason with hollow eyes was pushed to the other side, knocked out. The withered Jensen was transformed by his father into a poor tool that couldn't think. He couldn't do anything except subconsciously create illusions. Professor, how have you been? Joe Luo pulled a chair, sat down in front of Professor X, and took off the instrument from his head. Because of the mutant inhibitor, it may take a while for you to fully recover. Joe Luo smiled lightly, Professor, I have already reminded you last time. Why did you still fall into the trap of Stryker? Listening to Joe Luo's slightly jokingly caring words, Professor X couldn't help but blush. Indeed, Joe Luo had reminded him that he still had unrealistic and beautiful illusions and was so easily deceived. Okay, I'll take you away first. Joe Luo pushed the wheelchair out and walked out, this time Stryker won a big victory. The school you have worked so hard to run has been completely scratched. The children are probably terrified now. Bar. Save them. The professor grabbed Joe Luo's arm. For the first time in his life, he begged others like this, Joe, I know you have this ability. Chin and the others can't make it back now. Only you can save them. I will. Otherwise, what do you think I'm here for? Look at your jokes. Joe Luo pushed the professor out indifferently, but the people outside turned a blind eye to them, you should seriously consider this time. Here is my opinion. He looked at the bald old man with a complex expression and said softly, peace never depends on prayer, but on the initiative to fight for it. I hope mutant can join me I can create a better future, whether it is for ordinary humans or mutant. Do I still have a choice? The professor said bitterly. He understands mutant's situation very well. With Eric's debut, the government has made up his mind to resolve this threat. Even if he escapes from the damn base, what can he do next? Find another place to hide, or join Magneto's Brotherhood and carry the banner of rebelling against the human government with your friends. Charles has already figured it out. It's useless to shrink back, but can fierce resistance be exchanged for a better future? Professor, you can try to believe me first. Although I am not a good person in terms of your moral judgment standards, but you know, I will keep my promises for this kind of thing. Joe Luo saw through the hesitation in the heart of the bald old man. Said with a smile. No matter how much Charles tends to the human side, when his compatriots are facing an extinction crisis, he will eventually make choices that go against his original will. You can persuade me, but Eric will never compromise. The professor knew very well that if his friends couldn't settle down, there would be no consensus within Mutant. With a smile at the corner of his mouth, Joe Luo said in a relaxed tone, I have always been very good at persuading others, whether it is verbal or other aspects. The Oval Office of the White Palace, affiliated to the news media of major TV stations, has been inspected and entered the country's top power center. Today, the president will issue a public statement on the mutant issue and the registration bill to express the attitude and position of the federal government. As the countdown sounded, Mr. President put on a gentle but cordial smile. Speaking of it, he is also quite a headache. He originally hoped that Stryker could solve the mutant problem cleanly, but just yesterday evening, the dam base in Akalia Lake was hit by the terror of the flood and vowed to kill mutant. Stryker, naturally it is impossible to escape. All signs indicate that the colonel's plan has failed completely, and the two mutant leaders are all safe and sound. Since mutants' troubles cannot be solved from the root cause, all the sins will be pushed to the dead William Stryker. However, considering the jealous Chable forces, Mr. President still needs to make his position clear and introduce mutant to the opposite of mankind, at least not allowing fishing vessels to continue to ferment. Looking at the scrolling speech on the teleprompter, Mr. President coughed twice, ready to begin an impassioned and sensational speech, in order to show a positive image of himself defying threats and accusing mutant of brutality. Before the voice came out of the mouth, the vast thunder light pierced the sky, and the billowing dark clouds instantly covered the sky. The blue clear sky suddenly dimmed. The camera and the teleprompter cut twice, and went out together with the lights on both sides. As the live broadcast still going on, the president looked up at the special service bodyguards and media reporters in the office. They looked like clay sculptures of wood and plastic, their eyes staring blankly in place. Realizing that something was wrong, the president turned his head and looked out the window. The thick leaden cloud surged like a wave, the white lightning danced wildly like a silver snake, and the oppressive breath of a torrential rain came spontaneously. 
When the president turned his head, there were already a group of strangers in the room. The headed bald old man was sitting in a wheelchair, smiling and beckoning roar. Under the electric light that pierced the clouds, he saw everyone's faces clearly. Mutant appeared on the striker profile. Don't be nervous, we won't hurt anyone. I believe you should know my name, Mr. President. The bald old man in the wheelchair said kindly, and Storm next to him stepped forward and handed a paper document there. Zhang's famous perseverance table. These documents about mutant were found in William Stryker's private office. The president glanced at the very detailed mutant defense plan. He sat down and said, I have never seen this information, and I will not negotiate under pressure. This is not intimidation. This is an opportunity to usher in peace, Mr. President. Professor X said softly, humans in this world, as well as mutant, some of them believe that war is coming. These documents can prove that there is someone in trying to provoke a dispute between the two races, both of us will be heard by then. Mr. President, now is a critical moment. While you are expressing your attitude towards mutant to the world, please do not repeat previous mistakes. We can usher in changes and create a better future together. As the thunder and electric light danced and gleamed, the dark clouds disappeared suddenly, and the light came back to the world. Mr. President sat on the chair and found that everyone was looking at him, as if everything that happened just now was just an illusion, not at all. Existence. Are you sure this really works, Joe? Professor X was worried, not sure about Joe Luo's suggestion. Don't worry, it's no problem. As I said, this is just the first step. Follow the plan later. Joe Luo grinned, full of confidence. This is at Xavier School. Behind Professor X, Chin is pushing the wheelchair and looking at Joe Luo with a grieving expression. She is angry at Joe Luo's disappearance without a word, but also stands up for Joe Luo's rescue at a critical time. I am grateful for the mutants. In a word, it is an old contradiction. Joe Luo didn't seem to feel anything. He smiled and waved his hand to the chin. Chin suddenly fell into a contradiction with huge amounts of. He didn't know whether he should go over or ignore Joe Luo. Seeing all this in his eyes, Professor X sighed helplessly and pushed his wheelchair away, leaving the men and women private space. You fool, tell me the truth, which woman have you hooked up with recently? Perhaps because of the outbreak of Phoenix Force last time, Chin's character was contaminated with a part of Dark Phoenix, becoming more popular and evil, and his tone of voice was much more aggressive than before. I don't dare to hook up with other women, you know, I only have you in my heart. Joe Luo looked at Chin affectionately, acting like a dedicated and infatuated man. It's a pity that Chin, who had been tricked by him many times, didn't eat this set at all, rolled his eyes and ruthlessly exposed his lies. Come on, do you want me to remind you? Like that little girl named Gwen, or Erica, Jane Foster. You have wronged me too much. Joe Luo clutched his chest and felt distressed. Although I don't know how you were with them, I have to explain. First of all, Gwen is just my colleague. She is in an experiment with me. The office does some research work, nothing more. Definitely, there is no need to elaborate on what to study, a sentence floated in Joe Luo's heart. Secondly, Miss Jane Foster, do you know about the recent Mexican alien incident? It was the clue that the young lady found first. You know, I am more interested in these things, so with this the young lady had some in-depth exchanges, nothing more. Hum, as for how to communicate in depth, there is no need to elaborate. Then, Miss Erica, we are purely a cooperative relationship. Have you ever heard of Shuhehui? They are a big organization. I just maintain a good cooperative relationship with their leader, nothing more. Well, how to maintain a good cooperative relationship, let's not go into details. Chin was amused by Joe Luo for three consecutive, just this, but it was obvious that she was not so easy to pass. The smile just flashed across her face, and the next moment it turned into a cold chill, Joe, you're the trick is too clumsy. Okay, Joe Luo sighed deeply, I just don't want to make you sad, even if I deceive you, I do it for your own good, trust me, you are always the most important in my heart. While talking, he took out a red velvet box from his pocket, I just want to give you a surprise, I hope you can be the most beautiful woman in my memory, even the slightest sadness I don't want to see on your face. The box slowly opened, and Chin was dazzled by the magnificent light reflected by the gems in the sun. When she reacted, Joe Luo had put the huge diamond ring in her hand. Look, 
It matches your hand. It took me a long time to personally select this for you. Do you like it? Joe Luo grabbed the hand of the piano, and did not let go no matter how hard the piano struggles. Chin pulled her back symbolically a few times, then stopped resisting and let Joe Luo pull her over. Holding the beautiful woman in his arms and smelling the faint fragrance of the tip of his nose, Joe Luo's mouth evokes a triumphant smile, sure enough, a woman will never resist these shiny things. Looking up, Joe Luo's expression was suddenly stagnant, and two small heads shrank from the corner of his eyes. Isn't this little naughty and Alice? Knowing that they had been discovered, the two women no longer hid. They showed their heads openly and walked out with a gentle smile on their faces. Although the two laughed softly, there was an inexplicable chill from the back of Joe Luo's head to his heels. These two women behaved wrong. Even if women's friendship is strange, they wouldn't have this expression. With many years of experience in love, Joe Luo instinctively feels full of fear. At this moment, Chin suddenly hugged him tightly, making Joe Luo unable to escape the idea that he wanted to escape in an instant. Then Xiao Qi reached out his hand to him, and grabbed him the little white hand was not wearing gloves. Hey hey hey, before Zhou Luo could speak, a terrible suction suddenly came from the little naughty hand, and then Zhou Luo felt the power of his whole body surge towards the little naughty man. Zhou Luo rolled his eyes directly, shaking like an electric shock Qian Nuo good. HMPH, Zhou, finally let us catch the opportunity, this time I can't let you escape again. With his eyes on the faces of the three women with ill-intentioned grinning, Zhou Luo subconsciously flashed four words in his heart, Doomsday is inevitable. When it's over, the most terrifying thing has happened. Three women get together. This is no different from sheer a field. Watching them tie themselves to an unmanned room, the decoration seems to be a little mischievous room, and then watching the three of them strip him naked, and skillfully tie him with neon knot hot rope art. Get up and with Joe Luo's horrified expression, the three of them opened a cabinet and took out a bunch of things that made Joe Luo frightened. The three of them glanced at each other and looked at Joe Luo maliciously. Alice flicked the whip in her hand and tried to pretend to be embarrassed. How many women's hearts have been deceived so far, give me an honest account. Chapter 71 Don't, baby, Joe Luo smiled dryly, we have something to say, don't do it, oops, oops, don't touch that stuff, oh. The three women operated after a meal, tired and sweaty, but Joe Luo happily played more and more, moved his hands and feet, and watched the three women panting, Joe Luo smiled yin and yin. Enough fun, it's time for me. After this period of time, Joe Luo had already recovered his strength, and as soon as he pressed his hands, the ropes that bound his hands and feet broke. Wow, the three of you will be united again. See if I can't clean up you today. Two hours were spent in laughter setting up three women who wanted to go to heaven, and Joe Luo got dressed. Stop, where do you want to go? For a second, the vigorous chin appeared at the door to block Joe Luo's way, I want to run so soon. I will be back. Joe Luo gave him a sweet comfort, mutant's future is still waiting for me to operate. You can always find reasons that people can't stop them. Chin rolled Joe Luo's eyes and sighed, but you have to pay attention. Pay attention to what? Joe Luo was a little curious. Shield should have noticed you, so prepare yourself. Joe Luo suddenly smiled bitterly. He understood the meaning of Chin. No matter how many cobweb horse trails Shield found out about him, a person would definitely come to him if he couldn't help it. Black Widow Natasha Romanoff. No matter, no matter, wait until she finds it. Joe Luo shook his head and left Xavier school grinning. He still has to work for the mutants, but it's a pity that the mutants don't know everything he has done. It's really sad to think about it. The president's proposal for mutants bill was eventually rejected, and he himself rejected it. This is not surprising. The current president has always been regarded by the public and the media as a guy who works without a head. A large part of his popular support rate even comes from his star dog. If America allows animals to participate in the campaign, his dog should sit in his current position. Definitely, only a small number of people know that the president's changes in order are completely threatened by mutant. Charles has returned and mutant has regained deterrence. Those paws that had just stretched out quietly retracted again, all the plans were shelved, and they could only watch the mutant college step by step and steadily rebuild. In the middle of this, Zhou Yi naturally made a lot of effort. He provided funds and manpower. 
Such a fanfare behavior would definitely attract the attention of S.H.I.E.L.D. Sooner or later, his identity would be exposed. But he didn't intend to hide it forever. After all, although it is fun to play as a pig and eat a tiger, isn't the return of the king more attractive? As for now, it's the mutant problem that requires Joe Luo to bother more. This matter is impatient and needs to be done bit by bit, such as now. After a wholesome exercise, Joe Luo held Gwen's face affectionately, and said softly, I think I should meet your father. Really, the girl was filled with great happiness from the sky, and she felt a little dizzy. Joe Luo's excellence even made her feel ashamed and unworthy of him sometimes. She didn't expect Joe Luo to take the initiative to mention this matter today, which surprised Gwen again and again. The day after tomorrow there will be a charity auction reception with the theme of providing a better life for the sacrificed firefighters and police officers' families. Come and participate. Gwen looked at Joe Luo flickering with hopeful eyes. No problem. Joe Luo smiled and continued to start the next round of wholesome exercise. New York, Hilton Hotel. The charity auction reception was held here. Under Gwen's leadership, Joe Luo quickly met her father, George Stacy, the commissioner of the New York Police Department. Seeing Joe Luo's arrival, the director general was not surprised. He seems to be prepared for Joe Luo's arrival a long time ago, and he also knows his identity. Welcome, Mr. Joe. I didn't expect you to actually come. If I knew in advance, I should make more preparations. While talking, he looked at Joe Luo with a slightly contradictory look, and looked at Joe Luo without any trace. To be honest, he is indeed a bit contradictory now. On the one hand, he and his daughter are in a romantic relationship, so he doesn't have to be polite with him at all. But on the other hand, only the identity of Joe Luo, which can be found by the chief director, has had to make him treat Joe Luo with a cautious attitude. You don't need to be so polite, uncle, I'm just attending this reception with your daughter. Too much preparation will scare me away. After a little joke, Joe Luo looked at Gwen next to him, go over there and rest for a while. I have some business affairs I want to talk to uncle. Gwen was obviously wrong, nodded hurriedly, and gave Joe Luo a, cheering, look when he left. Hum, Joe Luo can only say that he is very sorry about this. Watching Gwen go further and further, Joe Luo took the lead to open the topic. Uncle, the world is very insecure now, isn't it? I remember the things on the invitation. This charity auction is for 164 families of martyrs. You were right, Joe. Although I don't know what Joe Luo meant for this, George continued on this topic. Although New York is the best city, it is also the worst city. The crime rate here is among the best in the country. We have tried a lot, but we still cannot avoid some sacrifices. As the world's financial center, this city has crimes happening almost every day, and as long as there is a crime, it is inevitable that there will be sacrifices. Even superheroes can't stop this. These people are heroes, uncle. Their behavior is admirable, but I have to say that their sacrifice is not worth it. I do not understand you. Joe Luo's words made George frown. What is meant by the sacrifice is not worth it. This simply means that their efforts are worthless. Sorry, maybe you have some misunderstanding. Seeing the dissatisfaction in George's expression, Joe Luo shrugged. I mean, some sacrifices can be avoided. Definitely, I am definitely not promoting a product, it is something the employees do. I mean something else. So what do you mean? As a politician, George is not experienced enough. The police career has left too many marks on him, making him a little slow in this regard. And this is exactly what Joe Luo values him. He still has a conscience, and sincerely wants to make a career. He is for the safety of his duties and citizens, not for the so-called political achievements. I know a school where there is a group of students with special abilities. They can control flames, frost, can penetrate walls, and even be indestructible. Think about it, if these people walked into the police station or the fire station and became one of you, would your casualties be the same as they are now? Quote, Hearing Joe Luo's candid statement, George's brows deepened. He felt that he was listening to the most absurd joke, but he also felt that Joe Luo didn't seem to be joking. So he asked very hesitation. If I heard you correctly, do you want a group of mutants to maintain the public order in this city? Don't you know the direction of the nearest wind? If the citizens knew, they would definitely overturn our headquarters. 
Moreover, the lads under me certainly not willing. Quote. The citizens are just worried. When they taste the sweetness, there will be no objections. As for other issues, listen to my plan to you. The waiter passing by had a cocktail in his hand, and Joe Luo raised the glass to George. His confident confidence was enough to make George feel relieved for the time being. He took a sip of his wine and gestured to Joe Luo to continue. I will provide talents and funds. These are all allocated separately. They will not ask for even a penny of expenses like you, but still accept your dispatch. All you have to do is to give them a nominal identity and a normal partner. Definitely, in order to make their partners feel at ease, I will give them some extra financial subsidies. In addition, in order to reassure the public and your people, I will also let a person with a certain weight be the guarantor. All you need to do is to open a press conference in your own name and host the project. Other things are actually not a problem. Quote, when the casualty rate of your men is significantly reduced, the safety of the people of New York is getting better and better. Then maybe the position of the New York City manager is very close to you. Quote, hearing Joe Luo's plan, George couldn't help Roar sucking heavily. He pulled his tie to make himself more comfortable. But the fluctuations in my heart will be difficult to heal for a while. In this place of New York, the high level of crime can almost cut off the path of promotion for everyone who once sat in his position. What they receive is always complaints and complaints. It is harder to get the support of the people than to get to the sky. And wanting to rely on approval ratings to be the manager of this city, it is almost the same as the story in the dream. So, when I heard Joe Luo's plan, he immediately felt a glimmer of dawn. This is an opportunity, he knows it very well but he also understands the risks better. If there is something wrong with Mutant, then the host of his plan can submit his resignation directly. The reward is huge, and the natural risk is also huge. The key question is whether to gamble or not to gamble. George felt difficult, but he was actually very excited. But I always feel that the chips are not enough. In order to increase the bargaining chip in his heart, he had to dig deeper into the content of this plan. Can I know who the guarantor you are looking for is? You know, the risk is too great for me to take it alone. Well, what do you think of a superhero, a super rich man who always likes to wear black and red armor and sees a woman's eyes swaying like Schrodinger's cat? You said Tony Stark, George was skeptical, maybe his support will make some people change their minds, but it's not enough. So how about a hero who has awakened from sleep for 70 years, the proud people of the United States? Captain America, George was taken aback, he understood that, compared with Iron Man, the status of Captain America in the hearts of the United States is not a level. Many people even admire this veteran 70 years ago even now. Well, maybe it is enough for the people, but you should understand that many things will never be enough for the people. George pondered for a while and shook his head. Definitely, I understand, Joe Luo smiled confidently, so how about a few more congressmen? Oh, yes, and the nominal manager of this country. My God, you, Joe, you better swear that what you said is true. George's expression became more serious. Definitely, for Gwen's sake, I won't lie to you with this kind of thing, uncle. Joe Luo laughed more and more happily, they will give support publicly, as long as you do this. Enough, there was a red glow on George's face. He drank the wine in the glass in one sip, and the whole person looked so energetic, and he reached out to Joe Luo without any hesitation. Happy cooperation, Mr. Joe. I think this plan will go smoothly. By this time, George had completely abandoned the idea of treating Joe Luo as a junior, but as a peer who could cooperate with each other. Happy cooperation, the future manager of this city. With a smile and compliment, Joe Luo shook the hand of this man with ambition. This moment is a win-win result for both of them. As long as George agrees, his plan is half successful. As for the remaining half, it can be completed by the previous arrangement. Charles's stubbornness will not last long, and the internal forces will make him have to change. Joe Luo is very confident about this. The communication between the two ended in a hurry. At this time, George didn't dare to be too close to Joe Luo, even if there was a relationship like Gwen. The plan between them is very sensitive. If the news is leaked before the official opening, it will be huge amounts of trouble for them. So Joe Luo quickly took Gwen to other places in the hall, 
and George was nominally the host of this reception, so he still needed to preside over the situation. Watching Zhou Luo take his daughter away, he was called a Wu Wei Chen Zha, just like watching the cabbage he had worked so hard to raise by a pig, but he had to deliberately create conditions for the pig. When the charity auction officially started, an acquaintance sat next to Zhou Luo. While holding the sign, he signaled his offer to the auctioneer on the stage, while speaking to Zhou Luo. Is it really good to talk to a police chief? He doesn't seem to be as influential as you think. How dare I work with someone with great influence on this kind of thing? I'm afraid of being swallowed by someone. In addition, your hairline is so beautiful. It seems that your personal DNA has contributed a lot to your work. Phil Coulson touched his thinning hair, his face couldn't help showing the vicissitudes of life. Joe, you fool really hasn't changed at all. When you open your mouth, people can't help but want to shoot you. He lowered his voice and snarled in Joe Luo's ear. I'm too busy at work recently, it's definitely not that personal DNA. Joe Luo laughed, but his contemptuous eyes made Phil Coulson furious again. In fact, Joe Luo was also very curious. He didn't expect that Shield would find him so soon, and the first one to find was Phil Coulson, who had been, not dealing with, him. At this time, he didn't know what Shield was up to, so he directly asked what Shield was up to now. To be honest, Shield has changed a bit recently, Phil Coulson sighed. Because of the last Hydra accident, everyone was in danger for a while, and no one knew whether the colleagues around him were secretly undercover by Hydra. Even you, who disappeared during that time, were asked by many people to conduct a thorough investigation to see if you flee with important shield information, but were suppressed by the director. Quote, really, I didn't expect Nick Fury to be so kind. Joe Luo smiled, how is my master? I thought it would be her this time. She's very busy now, you know, Tesseract is out of control, and we don't even know what caused it all. Phil Coulson was worried. Let me guess, Joe Luo suddenly understood. This is the beginning of the Avengers Alliance 1 plot, Drive. Selvig and Clinton are missing, right? Clinton is Hawkeye, and his combat power is about the same as Black Widow. How did you know? Phil Coulson's face changed suddenly, Joe, don't let me know that it has something to do with you. No, 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 Joe Luo stood up grinning, stretched out a finger and shook, remind you, get ready, war is about to break out. What war? Wait a minute, you fool, make it clear. My friend is here, Phil Coulson. If you want to know more, let my master come. I have no interest in communicating with men in depth. Joe Luo took the hand of Gwen who came over, laughed, and turned to leave. Shit, you shit. Phil Coulson was helpless. According to the information they got, Joe Luo is no longer the Joe Luo he used to be. His combat power has changed drastically. I am afraid that Phil Coulson can be beaten and cry with just one finger. There is no way, this matter can only be reported to his immediate boss after going back and let him decide. On the other side, a remote and unmanned suburban factory. Two figures, one large and one small, stood on the empty field. They were dressed in strange costumes and fully armed. Dad, let's go. Mindy stroked her purple wig, which was given to him by Joe, but he hadn't seen herself in a long time. Go, Mindy, tonight is our time to avenge your mother. The big old man checked the weapon on his body, and his tone was uncontrollable with excitement. Dad's original name was Damon McCready. He was once a star of the police station and his future is bright. However, because he focused on Frank D'Amico, the underground boss of the West Coast, not only did he get no results, he was falsely accused and sent to prison. But this was the beginning of the tragedy. During his imprisonment, his pregnant wife took medicine and committed suicide because he could not face the pressure of life. Fortunately, the child in his belly was successfully born. This is the tragic story that happened to Dad. After being released from prison five years later, he is determined to avenge his enemies and train his daughter in a nearly crazy way. Turn a cute and innocent blonde lowly into a killer weapon with a good skill and proficient in firearms. The ultimate goal is to overthrow Frank D'Amico's lair and avenge his dead wife. And today is the time for the final revenge. Go. Taking a deep breath, the big old man waved and took his daughter into action. Mintimer followed the big daddy silently, because she knew the big daddy's temper, so she didn't oppose or discourage her actions tonight. 
even if she had a very strong ominous premonition about this action in her heart, as if she was about to usher in the end of her life. Hope my dad can realize his wish. She thought silently in her heart, and at the same time couldn't help but think of Joe Luo's appearance in her mind. Before the action tonight, she sent what she wanted to say to the number Joe Luo had left her before. She didn't know if Joe Luo could receive it, so she could only hold a trace of naive fantasies, hoping that Joe Luo could remember her. Hey, Joe. When Joe Luo was about to rest in the new room he had just moved in, an unexpected call came in. Tony, you fool, how did you find out about me? Joe Luo's face didn't look good. Don't forget, I'm a genius Tony Stark, Tony smiled triumphantly on the phone. Although I really want you to be convinced by me, it is obviously not the time now. Here is a message that I think should be very important to you. For me, Joe Luo was a little surprised. Definitely, do you remember that you asked me to help you build an artificial intelligence system? Although you haven't talked to her for a long time, she manages all your previous accounts for you. Okay, thanks, I will ask you to eat soil another day. Joe Luo then agreed and turned off the communication, wanting to see what the message was. Joe, this is Mindy. It's been a long time since I heard from you. Well, I'm tonight. Listening to the familiar and lovely voice, Joe Luo's face became gloomy little by little. A few minutes later, a figure rose into the sky and quickly disappeared from the horizon. In the underground forces on the west coast, there are many rumors about Frank D'Amico, most of which are gossips that reflect the cruelty and cruelty of the other party. But what interests more people is the strong fortress that stands in the center of the city. He spent huge sums of money to buy an entire building and transformed it into his own shelter. The floors are full of armed gunmen and bodyguards. Without his consent, it is absolutely impossible for anyone to enter the top floor, Frank D'Amico's residence. And half an hour ago, a pair of father and daughter launched a crazy attack on this place. Mindy, let's go up the elevator shaft. Damon, taking his daughter, is moving towards the top floor. Don't be afraid of Mindy, dad will stand in front of you. Damon has a very strong combat strength, and Mindy also has a formidable strength far surpassing her original age under frantic training. Frank D'Amico, here I am. Frank D'Amico, the owner of this building, was sitting at his desk at the moment, holding the pistol tightly in one hand and staring at the door. Any sound coming in from outside would arouse his nervousness. Frank arranged at least 20 gunmen outside, each holding a Remington shotgun. As long as the fool dared to appear, the violent firepower would be enough to tear each other to pieces. He constantly comforted himself, even if the guy who broke into his turf was a mercenary with many battles, under the blow of the crowded tactics and fierce firepower, he could only end up in a tragic end. Rome, what's the situation outside? Frank opened his mouth and asked, his voice slightly dry. If the intruder can really break through the powerful firepower outside, then he also prepared a big gift for the other party. The scene is chaotic. There seems to be more than one intruder. Someone cut off the power supply system of the entire building just now, but the top floor uses a separate electrical device, so there is no problem. The burly man guarding the door replied that he is a well-trained beater by the boss Frank. He has won 10 consecutive victories in the underground boxing arena and has always been a trump card in Frank's hand. There are accomplices. Don't let me find out the true identity of this fool, otherwise I will let him experience the pain of losing everything. There was a fierce light in Frank's eyes, and his face was even more terrifying. As an underground boss who has been on the West Coast for many years, it was the first time he was forced to do this. Bang bang bang. There was a sudden violent gunfire outside, and Frank raised his pistol subconsciously and faced the door nervously. He didn't expect that the intruder rushed up so quickly, and nearly 50 gunmen underneath could not stop the opponent's surprise attack. The screams and the violent gunfire mixed together, and the bullets flew horizontally in the limited space, intertwined into a dense net. Damon, hiding behind the pillar, did not expect that Frank D'Amico would deploy such a powerful firepower here. The lethal shotguns fired all at once, making a loud and deafening noise like a thunderstorm. Damon shrank behind the column, the shotgun blasted the sawdust flying, and the gunman formed an encirclement and approached step by step. As long as he stuck his head out, he would immediately be blasted into a pool of mud. The small Mindy hid above the elevator, 
Damon made a tactical gesture to his daughter and then rushed out quickly. A volley of two guns in his hands quickly took away two lively lives. At the same time, a small purple figure went up the elevator. Several flying darts hit the gunner's wrist, and then a flexible roll, the innocent and lovely Lily instantly turned into a violent and powerful killing weapon. The flying darts from his waist kept shooting out, the butterfly knife in his hand traversed a cold track, and the top building instantly became a bloody sheer of field. Little Loli, who is proficient in cold weapons, cooperates with the big old man who shoots and shoots, and for a while, he is invincible. Rome, you go out to see the situation. This fierce battle lasted for nearly ten minutes, and Frank felt a little uneasy when he heard the gunshots scattered outside. The big burly man opened the door, and a little Loli with purple hair swooped over. As a horror figure who had struggled and killed in the underground boxing ring, Roma didn't panic. With a heavy punch in his backhand, he knocked out the young Loli. Frank D'Amico. Damon saw the enemy's face, and his chest was full of anger. If it weren't for the burly Roma to stand in front of him, he could not wait to rush over and let the West Coast drug lord experience what it means to be pain and torture. Rome, kill them. Frank saw two figures outside, one large and one small, without hesitation. Okay, boss. Rom shook his neck and walked towards Damon, only to be blocked by the little Loli who stood up again. Mindy, who has been trained since childhood, may not be strong enough, but she has agility and agility beyond ordinary people. Seeing that his daughter had temporarily entangled the burly man, the old man strode into the room and shot Frank's pistol with his tactical dagger. This man who is committed to revenge and full of endless pain in his heart has waited for many years and finally got a chance for revenge. Frank D'Amico, I'm here to send you to hell. It's just that you've been destroying my business and sending all of my men into the restaurant to drink tea. Frank pretended to be calm, and put his injured hand quietly under the table. Definitely, it's too easy to kill you with a single shot. I want to destroy your career, just like you destroyed my life and family in the first place. Oh, I remember, you are the guy the first sent to prison. Frank finally remembered the identity of the other party, after all, the big old man also left him with a lot of impression. In fact, we can talk about it, after all, it's all from the past. Nothing to say, Frank D'Amico, it's all over. The big old man rushed forward, preparing to kill this lifelong enemy. Well, everything is over. Frank kicked off the heavy desk, and Damon dodged sideways, avoiding the behemoth that had hit him out of thin air. When he was about to step forward, the dark hole pointed at him. Boom, the glass on the top floor shattered and Joe Luo rushed in directly from the air, but only saw the corpses all over the floor and the scattered bullets. And Mindy was struggling with a sturdy man. Joe, Mindy was the first to discover Joe Luo, and shouted in surprise and joy, but forgot that he was in a fight, and he was distracted by Roma to seize the opportunity. This sturdy man immediately attacked Mindy with a grinning grin. It only takes a single click to break her neck, which is not as thick as his own arm. Roll, there was a violent drink behind him, and then he felt like he was hit by a speeding train, and the whole person turned into a meteor and flew out. Such a big person still bullies a little girl, do you want to be shameless? Joe Luo flicked his fist badly, and turned into a smiling face when he faced Mindy. Joe, save my dad. Little Loli was full of anxiety, worried about the big daddy in his heart, and didn't have any thoughts to say anything else. Don't worry, we're here. Halfway through Joe Luo's words, there was a boom, huge amounts of explosion sounded through the space on the top floor. The turbulent wave-like impact force destroyed all the light bulbs and lamps on the ceiling. The bright floor-to-ceiling windows were also shattered, and the bookshelves erected on both sides of the bookcases flew across, and shredded papers fluttered. Joe Luo was stunned again, looking at Frank D'Amico, who was carrying a rocket launcher in both hands, and the middle-aged man who was half-dead on the ground. He felt that he had seen something wrong. Why did this even a bazooka come out? Am I in someone's house or in the arsenal of Hanmo industry? After a brief stupefaction, Joe Luo knocked Frank to the ground with a fist in the air, vomiting blood, unable to move, and surrendered all the weapons. Dad, Dad, little Loli knelt on the ground and shook the middle-aged man who had no signs of life, tears falling like broken pearls. Joe Luo walked over and gently lifted her up. Sorry, I'm late, he sighed, 
the old man was completely dead, and there was nothing he could do. Joe, finally, Mindy couldn't help but burst into tears. Hearing the police siren from below, Joe Luo could only temporarily give up his intention to comfort Mindy, and instead persuade him, let's go, let's leave first, otherwise it will be troublesome. A few days later, under continuous rain, Joe Luo and Mingdi, dressed in black and holding umbrellas, stood silently in front of the old man's tombstone. Dad, I will take care of myself. I hope you can see mom in heaven. I will miss you. Little Loli looked sad and mourned silently. For a while, he reluctantly looked back at the photo of his father on the tombstone and took Joe Luo's hand and left. Mindy has been dependent on her father for so many years. Once the big father died, she had no relatives in this world, so Zhou Luo adopted her smoothly. Although this is not very compliant for Zhou Luo's age, for him it just pays a little more Franklin, which is not a problem at all. Hum, it feels good to raise a little lowly. You need to continue to school, Mindy. Zhou Luo said to Mindy with a serious face when he returned to his residence. No, Zhou, you promised me to take care of me. Mindy stubbornly turned her small face to one side, her puffed face resembling a bun's face, which made people want to stretch out her hands and squeeze too. That's not good, I will definitely take care of you, but it doesn't mean that I will spoil you. Joe Luo smiled evilly and raised little Loli, go to school for me. I don't want it, I don't want it. Little Loli's limbs were waving in the air, but it was a pity that all resistance in the hands of the big devil Joe Luo was in vain. The teacher in the school teaches two simple things, I can learn it as soon as I learn, but the teacher is not willing to speed up the progress at all, because other people can't learn it. In desperation, Mindy can only tell the truth, and those bad boys always bully girls. And they are very useless, crying as soon as they hit, crying more fiercely than girls. I always like to go to M's Wendy to file a complaint. Quote. Joe Luo heard a black line, feeling that this is always beating people in school, so I don't want to go to school. But think about it, after all, Mindy is not a child of an ordinary family, and she cannot be restrained by ordinary children's standards, so ordinary peer schools are indeed not suitable for her. In this case, it seems that there is a school that is suitable for her to go to, Joe Luo touched his chin and let out a horrible laugh. Looking at Joe Luo, who didn't know what bad idea he was thinking, Mindy only felt a bitter cold behind him. A few hours later, at the gate of Xavier School. Hey, 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 Andre, be careful, there are children in the car, don't frighten her. Seeing Andre, the old security guard who came out with the rocket launcher, Joe Luo waved his hand quickly. Maybe he knew that Joe Luo was much stronger than before, so the old security guard now saw Joe Luo without using a gun, and went straight to the big guy. Joe Luo even suspected that he should change the missile a few more times. Seeing that there was a cute little girl in Joe Luo's car, Andre put away the rocket launcher angrily and waved to Joe Luo to let him in. I don't know if it is an illusion, Joe Luo always feels a little regretful in Andre's eyes. Against the curious eyes of people coming and going, Joe Luo took Xiao Loli all the way to Professor X's office. Old man, old man. Joe Luo unceremoniously pushed open the door of the professor's office, and saw that the professor closed his eyes and looked like he was wandering away from the sky. Old man, old man, fell asleep. Joe Luo stepped forward and shook his head at the professor. Mindy looked at the bald grandfather curiously beside him. Joe, it's you, the professor came back to his senses, and was jumped by Joe Luo, who was flaring his teeth and dancing in front of him. I thought it was Kurt who came in, and I told you, Joe, I just tried Soul Astral, you know, my spirit is out of the body, and I can really move freely. Wow, the spiritual power of the professor has been so strong. Although Joe Luo remembered that this kind of plot appeared in the movie, he was actually envious when he heard him say it. Originally the professor was very strong, but now his body is no longer a fatal weakness to him, he has become even more stubborn. Professor, you can leave these things to discuss with others. I'm here to bring you a student. Joe Luo said, pulling Mindy over. Mindy, this is Professor X. Hello Professor. Mindy greeted Roar obediently. The principal of Mutant School, such a famous character, she had never seen before, and suddenly she became more curious and restrained after seeing it. Hello, little girl. Professor X showed a kind smile on his face, 
touched Mingdi's head, and turned to look at Zhou Luo. She is not mutant, yes, but she is also not suitable for ordinary people's school. Zhou Luo shrugged, telling the truth. To be honest, I don't recommend her to stay here. My students are still too dangerous for most ordinary people. No, no, professor, you made two mistakes. Zhou Luo stretched out a finger and shook it. First, she didn't stay here, but went to school on time and I would pick her up. Second, with all due respect, the children here are so well protected by you. They are just children and have no fight at all. Ability, and my little Mindy. When he said this, his tone changed, and he suddenly became cold, you are welcome, if she wants to kill the children here, all it takes is a matter of time. Are you sure? The professor heard Joe Luo's words, but instead of refuting him, he asked with a strange expression. Definitely, no, old man, shouldn't you think about, Joe Luo suddenly thought of a possibility. Ha ha, Professor X pretended to smile, Stryker broke the school twice easily, making me realize that we need to make a little change. So I decided to open a new course in school so that at least these children will not fail to protect themselves in the face of danger. Quote, so you want Mindy to be a teacher to teach those kids fighting skills? Joe Luo asked with false eyes. Yes, the professor smiled treacherously like an old fox. Definitely, just let her be an assistant lecturer in the combat course. The main courses are still taught by Chin, Kurt, and Aurora, and she also needs to study well in the cultural course. I think it's okay. Joe Luo nodded, and suddenly he smiled and rubbed his fingers, this salary. The salary is easy to say, and I will definitely not let her down, the professor arrogantly spread his hands, and then smiled, this tuition. Just deduct it from the salary. Joe Luo also waved his hand, arrogantly dry. Very good, very good. The two nodded in satisfaction at the same time, but silently cursed each other in their hearts. Old fox, little fox, Mindy watched the two of them say a few words before deciding her fate, and she was bewildered. At this time, there was a knock on the door, and then Chin pushed the door and said, Professor, you call me. After seeing Zhou Luo, her expression was obviously happy, but immediately when she saw the little lowly next to Zhou Luo, her expression changed again. Zhou Luo even felt a trace of Phoenix Force leaking. Jin, a trace of invisible mental power suppressed the Phoenix Force. This is a new student of Xavier School, Miss Minty, take her around and get familiar with the school environment. Mindy, she's a teacher at school, M's Jin Gray, you go out with her first, I have something to discuss with the professor. Joe Luo said to little Loli. Mingdi nodded, looked back at Joe Luo, and was taken out by Chin. The door of the office closed slowly, and the conversation between the professor and Joe Luo changed. I have heard about everything you have done recently, but I am still a little worried. The wrinkles on the professor's face seemed to deepen. He has been struggling for mutant's identity all his life, and he knows how deep the gap between humans and mutant is. Can humans really accept mutant? Can mutant really accept human positions? It seems that the professor is also a contradictory figure. While having deep doubts about his own ideas, he is unswervingly implementing his goals. Zhou Luo thought so, nodded and said, definitely is not that simple. As I said, our actions are not done overnight, but need to be done slowly. The first step towards peace is always difficult and bumpy. Mutant's desire to fight for his own rights will not be easier than the blacks back then. Even 150 years after Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, racial discrimination still often occurs in this so-called land of freedom. Quote. So what are you going to do? The professor looked up. He wanted to know what solutions this confident young man had. I found a politician who also has the concept of peace. He will be the first to issue a just defense for mutant's difficult situation, and at least to reverse the image of mutant in people's hearts. I don't want to ask how you found it, but this is certainly not a personal opinion with a benevolent heart. The professor tried to be humorous. Definitely, it's just what he needs. I can give it to him. That's enough. Joe Luo smiled and didn't discuss this issue in depth. I have discussed with Mr. Vice President, he will give a public speech in support of mutant, set up a special mutant office, and mutant will serve as the liaison officer. And he will initiate a proposal to elect a mutant as a peace ambassador, in order to subtly change people's impression of mutant. Quote, 
Then, more than a dozen large and medium-sized capital giants such as Osborne Industries and Stark Industries will issue statements in a short period of time. Tell the world that mutant is not a virus, nor is it another creature, but a human being, just a human with special talents. Just like David Copperfield's magical talents, or Jordan's ability in basketball, apart from these, mutant is no different from humans. Then, these big companies will openly state that they hire mutant as employees, and some with special talents will get higher positions. Quote. That's good. The professor's emotions were driven. If this plan is really passed, at least the mutant livelihood problem he has been worried about can be resolved to a certain extent. Because of the estrangement between mutant and ordinary people, most professions in the society reject mutants spontaneously. Mutants who have no source of income can only obtain wealth through extra-legal methods. And this will make mutants' image in the eyes of ordinary people worse, thus forming a vicious circle, making the contradiction between mutant and ordinary people more irreconcilable. And Joe Luo's plan can alleviate this contradiction to a certain extent. The professor also knows how difficult it is for the capitalists to make such a decision, and he is even more grateful for Joe Luo's dedication. Osborne Industries will become the first company to openly recruit mutant, and those children can get their own salary just like normal people. Marriage, have children, start a family, these are no longer elusive distant dreams. Quote. Joe Luo's voice became agitated, and the professor's emotions were gradually aroused with his beautiful description, and his eyes shone brightly. As the bell rang after class, senior students headed by Bobby and John gathered outside the study. The curiosity of this group of children is too heavy, and the school does not have strict rules, which makes it inevitable that they have to jump a lot sometimes. A vague voice came out through the thick wooden door, and senior students stuck to the side listening to the conversation in the study. The original chattering discussion gradually stopped with the deepening of the conversation. They may not understand the specific content of the discussion between the two sides, but they may also understand that this is a discussion about the future of mutant. Joe Luo's uplifted voice clearly reached the ears of everyone outside the door, and the loud remarks could not help but silence everyone. Among them, the most touched ones are the senior students. Before they discovered mutants' identity, they lived a normal life. It was only a sudden change that caused these children to lose their parents and families. The introverted Iceman Bobby has flickering tears in his eyes. It is because of mutants' identity that he could not enjoy the warmth of the family, lost the care and warmth of his parents, and had to leave his hometown to come here. Other young mutants were also deeply touched. Almost every mutant has had similar experiences above. The hostility and rejection of them is everywhere in this society, and even the closest family members or friends rarely accept a mutant. Because of the fishing boat's guidance or lack of information, most people think this is a disease or a curse. And Joe Luo's words gave everyone a trace of longing and longing. Joe Luo, who had left Xavier School, was driving his newly modified sports car on his way home. He was the only person in the car, perhaps because the Xavier School was really interesting, and the young lowly Mindy actually agreed to live there for a while and play with his peers who have the magical super ability. Such a reasonable request made Joe Luo almost cried out, and drove back very happily by himself. A flaming red sports car was racing on the endless stream of roads. As soon as Joe Luo looked up, he suddenly saw a masked weird sitting on the railing of the viaduct. He was wearing red and black tights, his legs dangling leisurely, and he didn't seem to be afraid of the tragic consequences of falling. This guy still sang, shoop, with unbearable lyrics in his mouth, and the out-of-tune singing was drowned in the roar of cars passing by. If it weren't for the rich arms and equipment, perhaps others would think it was a Spider-Man. What? Joe Luo was stunned. Isn't this humble and cheap? The famous, anti-superhero, Deadpool, with its unparalleled ability in the world, and unimaginable self-healing ability, has caused many superheroes to have a headache. His presence will tell you that encountering an annoying neurosis is not the most tragic thing. The most tragic thing is that you have not yet been able to get rid of or even solve this guy. Joe Luo originally thought that because of his participation, even Francis was killed, Xiao Zhangjian would not be born, he did not expect the inertia of the world to be much greater than he thought. Hi, man, is the scenery above that nice? Joe Luo shouted at the sports car about to pass over the viaduct. Although this disfigured face was mentally abnormal, it was still an extremely scary chatter. However, 
Zhou Luo remembers that he is a mercenary who does things on the basis of money and can accept any entrustment. Hey, who is this fool who looks less handsome, less handsome than me, and less temperamental than me? Let me think about it. I don't seem to know, then think about it. Maybe I've taken care of his business in which bar? Deadpool laughed loudly, screaming, and Zhou Luo almost couldn't hold back to stop and beat him up. Although there is no great Deadpool as handsome and handsome, but it seems like a stupid person with a lot of money, maybe you can ask me to come and play. Order two hot chicks, no, how can two be enough? Deadpool, immersed in his own world, stretched his waist, stood up straight, then jumped down from the viaduct and hit the passenger seat with a, bang. Worry, don't you hurt. You are a real man. Joe Luo had weird eyes, and Deadpool's jumped legs were sitting on the car's joystick. Judging from the speed of the fall, the two precious eggs were worrisome. Hey, it feels like something is wrong, what's the problem? By the way, why did I hear the cracking sound of something just now, oh, sorry, the landing is a bit wrong, let me adjust the trajectory. Listening to the sound of, click, Joe Luo felt that all his cold sweat was left behind. He has never served anyone in his entire life, but Deadpool, a pure-hearted man who is calm and calm in the face of an attack on his fate, he has served it. Deadpool struggled to stand in the cramped body, and finally got into the position of the co-pilot. Look at your dress and your strong willpower, which is different from ordinary people. Let me guess, are you a superhero? Joe Luo asked knowingly. I may be a super, but far from a hero. Man, I am the best mercenary in the universe Deadpool. Do you have any dislikes? I can help you solve it. Recently, the business is not doing well. See you just gave me a flower, oh no, it was your car joystick that gave me a flower, so I only charge you a hundred extra. It's fifty cents. Quote. As Deadpool shook his head and said, halfway through, he gave a middle finger to a truck driver who was passing weird glances. This is an opinion worth considering. Joe Luo touched his chin, thoughtfully. Man, I'm currently preparing to form a team to protect my property. I wonder if you are interested. Are you rich? Deadpool asked eagerly. Even through the holster, Joe Luo seemed to be able to feel the light of his desire for money from his eyes. Rich, no, 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 let's put it this way, if you want to experience a golden swimming pool, you may be able to do it by following me for a few more years. Definitely, I am referring to gold as a substitute for water in a swimming pool. Monkey Leket. Deadpool was excited, and began to fantasize about how he would flop in a swimming pool full of gold. Definitely, sir, you would think that hiring me was a wise decision. I can do anything, even if you don't have a female companion by your side and you can't hold back, I can even temporarily replace that Miss XX who doesn't know her name. Quote. Deadpool's words were full of enthusiasm. With his legs close together, his hands covered his face wearing a red hood, he made a shy gesture and leaned against Joe Luo's shoulder. His enthusiasm that he can't wait to rush to kiss each other is like meeting a brother who hasn't seen him for many years. Do you really need money? Joe Luo quickly pushed Deadpool away, with goosebumps all over his body. He was now a little doubtful whether his idea was right. Definitely, definitely, sir, is there anyone in this world who doesn't need money? Even if he is a playboy Tony Stark, if he doesn't have money, how many women would be willing to look at him more? Not to mention being a good man about to get married, I always need some money to support my mother-in-law. Quote. It's incredible that you can find a wife. Joe Luo couldn't help but sigh. This sigh is from the sincerity. Definitely, my love, Vanessa, she is the most beautiful woman in the world. Deadpool once again succeeded in making Joe Luo get goosebumps with extremely nauseating words. At this moment, a voice suddenly rang in Joe Luo's ear. Ding. After digging deeply by the host, Deadpool succeeded in finding a life goal and starting a lifelong hobby, Kai Fan LV1. Joe Luo felt like he was bleeding. In other words, why Deadpool's lifelong hobby is not like that of Brother Hammer. But think about it. This attribute doesn't need Joe Luo to guide you at all, otherwise he can rush you to the full level in minutes. Hum, hiring a financial fan is a subordinate, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. Well, one million dollars a month, starting from today, you officially start your job, the first thing is to protect my life and property, how about it? Yes, my boss, 
Deadpool grinned and turned around on the co-pilot, as if seeing a bad guy beckoning at him. The sports car roar whizzes past. When Joe Luo was on his way back, a case that shocked New York was happening in Midtown. An old man in strange clothes sneaked into Harry's residence and successfully kidnapped Harry Osborne. As a well-known rich second generation, news of Harry's kidnapping spread quickly, and the identity of the kidnapper was quickly found out. This person is named Ed Ryan, and he is also a small celebrity in the Marvel world, known as the Tinker. He does not have any super ability, but he has extensive scientific expertise and is particularly good at mechanics. Speaking of this guy, he can be regarded as a capable person, because he had a dream of flying in the sky. Since he was a child, he just spent half his life researching a set of flight suits that can allow ordinary people to fly in the sky. This flight suit was favored by the military and quickly became one of the best-selling arms of the Osborne Group. But because of its high price and excellent practicality, the military has the idea of digging the wall. Relying on sufficient sincerity, the military successfully moved Ed Leon, an electronic engineer who is more than half a century old, determined to start anew. However, his betrayal deeply angered Norman Osborn, the dictator tyrant. Norman made a deeper deal with the military, in exchange for a promise to let the military give up Ed Ryan. On the one hand as an elderly electronic engineer, on the other as the powerful Osborne group, this choice is actually very easy to choose. In this way, Ed Ryan was completely checkmate by Norman's, raised from the bottom. Without the backstage of the military, Ed Lean is nothing in front of Osborne, he has lost everything. At this moment, there is only the word, revenge, that supports Ed Lean's motivation to live. Therefore, Desperately he chose to kidnap Harry in order to blackmail Norman Osborne and achieve his goal of revenge. Ha, huh, a lifeless guy. In Osborne's mansion, Norman Osborne snapped the phone to death, his majestic face was full of mockery. Master, are you really okay with this? The old butler on one side looked at Norman Osborne with concern, he kidnapped Master Harry. The clamor of a defeated dog is just barking incompetent. After a calm glance at the loyal old housekeeper, Norman shook his head indifferently. Harry will be fine, that trash doesn't dare to do anything to him at all. The old butler did not speak. He felt that the temperament of this owner who had served for many years had changed drastically in the past. Although it has improved during this period, it is still very different from before. Norman sensed the worry in the eyes of the old butler, and smiled at him slightly, don't worry, I'm fine. Even if I am alone, I can guarantee that Harry is not in danger, not to mention that I am not alone now. In a relatively luxurious building in the Hell's Kitchen area, the staff who had just finished overtime left the company together. But a group of fancy-dressed teenagers sneaked in at this time. I can handle him, Chloe. I believe you have that ability, Thunderbird. But you are too insignificant to start. We are a group. You should trust me more. Don't be rapt. If you two have nothing to do, just go play philosophy. Don't forget, we are here to save Harry. With a green hair fluttering in the wind, a beautiful little girl appeared from the darkness. Hurry up, the solar eclipse said, and his eyes were turned to the side of the green-haired beauty Polaris intentionally or unintentionally. In the past two days, her temper was very irritable. If he expected it well, the other party was not a relative who came, but the same old problem, two-way affective disorder. Polaris, whose real name is Lorna Dan, is Magneto's daughter. Like Magneto, she has the ability to control the Earth's magnetic field. When engrossed, Polaris can only perceive things around her in the mode of magnetic energy, and her green hair is the first manifestation of the variant ability. There are so many open lines, secret guards and mechanisms. Are you sure Ed Leon is hiding in this place? Polaris spoke after another group of secret guards were resolved by her mutant men. The facility in front of her was tighter than the military institutions she had seen. How could a guy like Ed Ryan catch up with such a boss? Ed Lean, these little mice seem to be looking for you. After Polaris's voice fell, a slightly complaining voice came over. Immediately afterwards, rhythmic footsteps sounded in the corridor, and for a while, the mutants became vigilant. So it was here to save little Harry. Appearing from the corner of the corridor, Ed Lee stared at Polaris firmly. Beautiful girl, I know you. What a coincidence, I'm trying to deal with Magneto. It's a big tone, 
Try it if you have the ability, and see if I don't strip your feathers off. Blocking in front of Polaris, Thunderbird took out his pistol and pointed it at Ed Lien. The young man has a temper. Ed Lien immediately threw an electronic bomb, a flash of electric light flashed, and Thunderbird's body appeared slightly convulsive. Diarysis, are you massaging me? When the electronic bomb was smashed to pieces, Thunderbird shot Ed Ryan in one shot. Perceiving something wrong, Ed Lien waved his wings and moved quickly in this narrow space. Don't be careless, Ed Lien. He is mutant. The man who looked like an oriental beside him stretched out his hand and waved some strange flying darts towards Thunderbird's eyes and neck. Hey, a heat wave rolled, flying darts collided with the golden rays in the air, and then they were bounced away. The hands of the solar eclipse shone with hot light, and they looked at the bullseye not far away, seeming to provoke the opponent. Bang! The sound of his body falling to the ground sounded, and Ed Lean, who was unable to exert his full strength due to the small space, was hit by Chloe. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Thunderbird stepped forward and a grappling knocked Ed Lien to the ground. Enough! Just when Thunderbird was about to knock Ed Lien unconscious and take away, one hand grasped Promise, his waving arm, and abruptly pulled him away from Ed Lien. Mrs. Gao, the moment she saw the old woman, the Eclipse recognized her identity. A group of well-trained ninjas flanked back and forth, surrounding the mutant gang. Ms. Lorna, the Shamrock Association and the Mutant Underground Organization have always kept the well water in the river. What are you doing? Mrs. Gao smiled, giving the Eclipse the feeling of being stared at by a poisonous snake. We don't intend to join hands as an enemy, but we want to take Harry Osborne away. Faced with this treacherous old woman, Polaris was not afraid. Miss Lorna, I will return these words to you as well. Leave Ed Ryan behind, and I will assume that the things you killed me have never happened. Otherwise, do it. Hearing Mrs. Gao's words, Polaris's hands showed a strange magnetic field. As she raised her hand, the surrounding metal object suddenly floated into the air. The atmosphere was embarrassing. The katana and shurikens of the ninjas were all confiscated by Polaris, and Ed Lien, wearing a flight suit, became a bubble, floating in the air. With just one blow, they wiped out one-third of their own combat power, and then they had a fart. Sure enough, I am sick. What is really afraid of? Taking a look at Polaris, the Eclipse suddenly felt the life and death bearish, just do it. Spirit in the other party. At the moment, the Eclipse just wanted to say. Ms. Gao is one of the underground overlords in New York anyway, Miss Sister, can't you stop being so hungry? My dad is Magneto, Mrs. Gao controls the hands-on union, and there are thousands of younger brothers under her. My dad is Magneto, Mrs. Gao is cruel, murderous, and cannibals without spitting out bones. My dad is Magneto, quote comma quote, Miss Lorna's ability is shocking. But how long can you hold on? Mrs. Gao is indeed an old lady, and she can see the reality of Polaris at a glance. Although ability is all about controlling magnetism, the difference in strength between Polaris and Magneto is simply heaven and earth, at least for now. The latter arrested a sea-crossing bridge like, eat and drink water, while the former just let some swords float in the air, and started roar-sucking disorder. Would you like to bet, how many people will you die before I run out of strength? After aiming the weapon at Jin and with his ninja, Polaris did not hesitation. Ah, Thunderbird and the man who threw the shuriken fought together like two wild beasts biting wildly. The defensive power and formidable power that once made Thunderbirds proud did not get much use in front of that man. Since the fight, he has been faintly at a disadvantage. Is he mutant too? With distraction, the man sees the opportunity to lock Thunderbird's throat. The huge power from it made the latter feel helpless for a while. At this moment, the man's head suddenly tilted to the side, as if he had received a heavy blow to the head. Immediately afterwards, Thunderbird successfully broke free from the shackles of the man under the invisible force of combining inside and outside. Unlike the reluctant delay on Thunderbird's side, the battle between Polaris and the ninjas is simply a one-sided slaughter. An angry Polaris, Controlling countless metal hard ninjas, is the rhythm of turning into a meat grinder every minute. Careful, at this moment, a gunshot suddenly resounded across the corridor. As for Polaris, who was still killing him, he was holding the bleeding wound and resisted not fainting. 
ceramic gun. The eclipse suddenly turned red, and his hands spurted lines wildly. Under the fierce attack, the entire floor began to burn violently. Hurry up. At this time, someone had rescued Harry. Harry was blinded, and he was dragged away without knowing what happened. At this moment, there was a loud roar, and the building trembled suddenly. The huge amounts of exploded, directly destroying a floor above. Run, run, play off. The solar eclipse jumped down from upstairs, only hating parents for missing a few legs. This group of guys are crazy, they dare to carry weapons of mass destruction with them. What's more shameless is that when they were suppressed by the solar eclipse, they threw this thing out at will. When the scorching rays collide with such powerful weapons, there will be ghosts if they don't explode. Boom boom, the explosion sounded from above, and the previous big explosion triggered a chain reaction. The upper floors from the 12th floor were lifted off by the explosion of huge amounts of. The gravel fell like raindrops all over the sky, and everyone's face changed suddenly. Under this kind of crisis, they didn't even have time to react. Even the relatively powerful Polaris can only gather steel to block his head. As for the others, she is intentional but powerless. Bang, bang, clang, 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 after a clutter that couldn't be described in words, the surrounding air actually solidified strangely. Inside the pile of rocks, Thunderbird looked at the strange energy field around him for a while, and he thought he was going to die just now. The next moment, Polaris was holding Peter in one hand and Ed Lien in the other, and escaped from this position. Roar sucked the dusty air, and Thunderbird looked around. In addition to him, the mutants were also protected. Oh, it's incredible, I saw such a scene as soon as I came here. In the air, Joe Luo carried two unlucky ghosts who were about to be killed slowly and fell. Fortunately, he came in time and solidified this space with Phoenix Force, otherwise it would not be known how many people died. Looking at the group of young mutants below, Joe Luo couldn't get angry. So why is mutant hateful? He would run away to demolish the building at every turn. The key to demolishing was his building. How much money was lost? You said just this group of mutant bear kids, can they not be hated? And you guys. Joe Luo's eyes condensed, and suddenly, not far away, he thought that Joe Luo hadn't noticed them, and Mrs. Gao and the others who wanted to sneak away immediately stiffened. Dare to do such a thing behind my back, do you want to die? Joe Luo's cold voice rang in Mrs. Gao's ear, and the killing intent in that voice even felt chills in the hearts of the Polaris next to them. Hey, boss, your loyal Deadpool is here. In the ruins not far away, Deadpool struggled to crawl out, and pulled out a steel bar that passed through his chest. This scene made everyone feel painful. I got what you wanted from the boss, let me see, ah, Yashida. It's okay, collect the evidence, and go back to receive the reward. Joe Luo waved his hand, and he already roughly understood what was going on. No problem with the boss, your loyal Deadpool will serve you wholeheartedly. Deadpool's mind suddenly showed his chic appearance of circling the check. Well, a great sage said, a man looks the most handsome when he pays for a woman. At this time, Joe Luo, who temporarily adjourned Mrs. Gao's case for retrial, turned his attention to Polaris. Well, this white man is so powerful. Oh no, this chick is really white. Doesn't seem right. Does it look good? Just when Joe Luo couldn't move his eyes away, a voiceless voice came from his ear. It looks good. It's not too big or small, it's just the right shape. Subconsciously responded, Joe Luo's voice stopped abruptly. Looking up at Polaris, who was not smiling, Joe Luo smiled frankly. Just kidding, Joe Luo, a well-hardened old driver, would panic under the gaze of a kid. This beautiful lady, are you interested in leaving a phone call? Let's have an in-depth exchange on the issue of compensation. Taking advantage of Polaris's waste, Joe Luo gently raised Polaris's chin despite the angry look in the solar eclipse that was blazing in his eyes. There is no reason not to eat the meat delivered to your door. You hateful fellow. You lied to me last time, what do you want to lie to me this time? Close to Joe Luo's ears, Polaris breathed blue, and the feeling of heat made Joe Luo's heart shake, but the expression on his face was also slightly embarrassed. If Magneto were to know that Joe Luo stepped on two boats and hooked up with Mystique and his daughter at the same time for a while, it is estimated that he might go crazy on the spot. People can change, don't they? Believe me, 
I've changed myself, I'm a new person. With a more presumptuous squeeze, Zhou Luo hugged the other person in his arms. But before he could make other movements, a pain suddenly came from his toes. It's so cruel to step on. Taking the initiative to let go of the beauty in his arms, Zhou Luo turned around and grabbed it, squeezing the two shurikens into a ball of scrap. Looking at the metal floating around Polaris and the solar eclipse, not far away glaring at him, Zhou Luo smiled slightly. It's okay. The kitten who fell into the trap can't escape. Kitten, could you please tell me, what deal did you make with our little Harry? What if I refuse? Then I have to ask him. I don't think Harry will refuse my inquiry. Zhou Luo acted a bit rascal, but Polaris knew that it was a disguise. Ha, huh, it's okay to tell you. It's my father, Norman Osborne has established a cooperation about turning ordinary soldiers into mutant. This kind of secret Polaris would never have been told if he was killed, but it was a pity that he was facing Zhou Luo, so he told it somehow. Let the soldiers become mutants and act as super fighters. Tisk, let me guess, there must be someone from the military intervening in this, um, it's General Ross. Putting his hands on his chest, Zhou Luo pretended to suddenly realize it. It seems that I was too naive in thinking. After all, Stryker's thoughts are not all. Definitely, otherwise things would have gotten worse, haven't they? Polaris had a charming smile on his face. Why am I still working hard in Mutant's future? It seems that you don't appreciate it very much. Well, let me guess, Magneto should be coming soon. As soon as Joe Luo finished speaking, a voice rang in the sky. It's been a long time, my children. A very iconic helmet, an extremely compelling cloak. After a long absence, Magneto, the two have met again since the last goodbye. Magneto, how are you doing recently? Joe Luo waved to him with a smile, I said, have you forgotten our original agreement? When Magneto saw Joe Luo, his face suddenly went dark, you fool, stay away from my daughter. Okay, okay, Joe Luo stretched out his hands indifferently and shook them, and the two of them rose to the sky in a tacit understanding. Listen, I know what you did with Charles recently. To be honest, although Charles and I have different ways of doing things, our goals are the same. Magneto looked at Joe Luo's cynical smiling face, and there were some complicated emotions in his heart. People call Roar and I am an extreme, mutantist. I don't deny this. Natural selection, survival of the fittest. The mutant group is stronger and smarter than humans, and we are the direction of future evolution. But if I say that I am anti-human, humans are the nursery where mutant was born. If we kill all humans, we will lose many brothers. Quote. This is true. There is a good saying that everyone can be a mutant, or in other words, everyone is not a mutant. Nodding, Joe Luo said that he recognized the other party's words. You see it thoroughly. Mutant is like a rising star, an existence that can have a huge impact on the old hegemony and the human-dominated society. Humans fear us because they anticipate that sooner or later we will be stronger than them and will rule them. So they tried every means to contain us. If they couldn't control us, they would rather choose to destroy us across the board. Quote. Speaking of this, Magneto's face is full of anger, which is what he wants to express to Joe Luo. He doesn't trust humans. I don't believe Joe Luo's method is effective. Hey, please, I have a hard time persuading Charles, don't let me talk nonsense with you, okay? Joe Luo's expression was rather helpless, you old guys are more stubborn than the other. Stubborn, no, what do you think of the recent mutant real name Bill? Magneto suddenly asked a tricky question. It depends on how you look at it, Joe Luo smiled slightly, we need to understand who initiated it and how to do it. HMPH, you little slippery, Magneto wanted to say something more, and a person suddenly interrupted his words. Eric, you changed the magnetic field in a large area before, and you have been spotted. Are you still chatting freely now? An older woman said blankly, according to my calculations, the fastest force will come to this place in five minutes. Computer girl, you are still so boring. Do you think I need to be afraid of anything? Those who need to be afraid are the guys who came to die. Glancing at the woman, Magneto was a little dissatisfied with her interrupting her behavior. Computer girl, hearing Magneto's name roar, Joe Luo suddenly realized that this woman is not a well-known character, and Joe Luo has basically never seen her before. Okay, Joe, I should go, beckon to the Red Devil, 
Magneto glanced at Joe Luo, if we have a chance, we will talk again next time, I think things will definitely make new progress at that time. Let's go, Joe Luo shook his head weakly, you'd better be honest during this time. Even if you don't agree with me, don't come out to get me in the way. Well, now that the people who got in the way are gone, it's time to interrogate those who dared to betray me. Joe Luo still has a smile on his face, but his eyes are cold. After being caught by Joe Luo, Mrs. Gao, who knew she was in danger, happily recruited everything Joe Luo wanted to know, just asking for a happy one. Because he had already seen that Joe Luo, a kind-faced and dark-hearted guy, could never keep her behind after she betrayed her. And in this world, death is not the most painful choice. Instead of suffering all the time, or turning into a strangely deformed monster, she might as well die quickly. Listening to Mrs. Gao's slow narration, Zhou Luo knew the ins and outs of the matter. In Neon Country, Xu Heihui has been in close cooperation with a large family company, Yashida Pharmaceutical. Yashida, the founder and current helm of Yashida Pharmaceuticals, is now very old, facing the same fate as a hand with a few fingers. Especially in the recent period, Yashida, who learned that his life was short-lived, has gradually become crazy, trying every means to extend his life, not knowing how to reconnect with Mrs. Gao. Also unwilling to be controlled by Zhou Luo, Mrs. Gao chose to take the risk and seized this opportunity to get rid of Zhou Luo's control. Unfortunately, she still underestimated Zhou Luo's power. In that world-famous war, the young Yashida Ichiro was just a small soldier like cannon fodder. In order to end the war, the United States dropped two nuclear bombs at Neon that were enough to end the war. Yashida Ichiro, who was on the scene, was rescued by Wolverine Logan, who was also there, at the cost of only some scars on his face. After that, Ichiro Yashida took advantage of the rapid economic recovery of Neon after the war, and it has become a decisive big shot of Neon today. Oh, so Logan may have been fooled by Yajishin to Neon, and Erika, at this point, Joe Luo frowned and looked at Mrs. Gao, you also fooled Erika. Neon. Yes, Madame Gao suppressed her body that was constantly trembling because of fear, Yashida is also very interested in the power of the black sky, thinking that the beast can help him extend his life. That's the belief that you have held together for so many years, so you just traded it out. Joe Luo asked Mrs. Gao, half sarcastically and half surprised. Faith, ha, huh, even though she knew that she was facing Joe Luo, Mrs. Gao couldn't help but laugh at herself when she said that, the hand healing club was created by us. What beliefs do you have? Very good. Zhou Luo applauded slowly, Deadpool, give her a good time. No problem, boss. The bored Deadpool's eyes lit up, and he pulled out the alloy knife behind him with a, swish. Oh, Deadpool, you fool, do you want to stain my floor? Zhou Luo quickly stopped. Okay, okay. Sorry boss, I will go out right away. Deadpool laughed awkwardly, dragged Mrs. Gao and dragged it out. Oh, this idiot. Joe Luo sighed, then looked towards the west. It seems that I have to go to Neon for a while, maybe I can pull some investment or something. At the same time, in Wayne Manor, Bruce had just returned from hunting with his three hounds, and he received the, good, news from the old housekeeper Alfred. Master, Mr. Joe Luo, who you brought me to pay attention to, I found his trace. Soon, the dignified Bross learned about Joe Luo's experience in this period of time. I have to say, Master, this seems a little different from what you thought. Even the wise Batman, at the moment, there was a bit of astonishment in his eyes. Indeed, he originally thought Joe Luo, who was infected with the Joker virus, would become as crazy as Joker. However, from the perspective of Joe Luo's recent behavior, although it is indeed different from his previous behavior, it can only be regarded as a crime at best, and it is still far away. Not crazy. The Bacchus factor, something that comes from the origin of the universe, cannot be resisted by pure will, and Batman has also experienced that taste firsthand. That's why Batman is so puzzled, how exactly did Joe Luo do it? Did he find another power of the origin of the universe to fight against it? Bruce, who was full of doubts, did not expect that his unprovoked guess was the correct answer. Alfred, get ready, I'm going to meet this old friend. A smile appeared on Bruce's mouth. 
Whether Zhou Luo really resisted the crazy power or his meticulous disguise, you only need to take a look at it for yourself, and everything will be understood. At the moment Zhou Luo is meeting with someone he doesn't want to meet very much. General Ross, this is an old man who is a hardliner even in the army and is nominally the father-in-law of the Hulk. Hello, General. Zhou Luo looked at the old man in front of him. He and Zhou Luo had a sense of spirit and fighting spirit. At the moment, he did not have the strength and majesty that had previously controlled all the situation, his left hand was bandaged, and his face was depressed and gloomy. Zhou, I don't think we have met for the first time. General Rose put the lit cigar aside and gestured to him with a glass of hard liquor. Yeah, General, the last time I met was when the two giants were fighting in a mess in the city. It's a pity that you didn't notice me that time. Zhou Luo chuckled, obviously seeing General Rose's face suddenly turn black when he mentioned, two giants. It seems that this general should be caused by the Hulk again, Zhou Luo snickered in his heart, but now Bruce Banner should be right at shield. Why would he just get up with General Ross? Well, let's not talk about this topic, I think there should be important things when we meet. General Ross exposed the topic with a cold face. We have always had a good cooperation with Osborne Industry. Now I heard that you are the real leader of Osborne Industry and you have brought us some new things. This is also my purpose, Joe Luo smiled faintly, better weapons and equipment, General, what is your definition of a good weapon? Which weapon kills the most people in the world? General Ross patted Joe Luo on the shoulder and said vaguely, a single weapon is the AK-7 assault rifle, which has killed millions in the 60 years since its birth, people. In my opinion, the best weapon should be like the AK-7, which can be used by people all over the world. In my opinion, Tony Stark's steel armor is just an expensive toy. Quote. General Rose sneered, his bandaged arm turned to the side, and he sighed. If our soldiers become like the captain of the United States, they have amazing physical fitness and extremely strong physique, just like a Spartan warrior, never afraid, full of fighting spirit. He was always thinking of Banner in his heart, to be precise, that powerful and incomparable green behemoth. General, I brought you a new weapon. Compared with the expensive steel machine, its cost is not worth mentioning. It can be put into production immediately. Joe Luo looked at General Ross, who was drunk, with his palms open, and a warm and shiny spinning top lying quietly in his palm. Ivan Vanke did not disappoint him, and soon copied Arc Reactor. The Energy Core of Steel Armor The military has been paying close attention to the steel armor in Tony Stark's hand, so General Rose recognized what this gleaming gadget was at a glance. It is the weapon development trend of the new era. Let us change the form of war from a duel of thermal weapons to a dispute of energization. Energy Weapon The drunk General Ross could not help but stage that magnificent picture in his mind. Mr. Joe, I have to say, you are really a visionary genius, if I have the opportunity, I really want to introduce my baby girl to you. General Rose said seriously with a tone of emotion. Joe Luo's expression suddenly became strange. Isn't General Rose's daughter the Hulk's girlfriend? Well, the Hulk, he he, the, green, giant. Boss, we caught a strange thing. When Joe Luo had negotiated with General Ross and was about to leave, Deadpool stopped him again. He looks like a legendary vampire. But it seems to be different from what I imagined, for example. I tried to plug a hole in him with a cross, but it didn't work at all. Wait a minute, oh no no no, boss, what are you thinking about, I said definitely is his nostril. Quote. Deadpool's constant chatter made Joe Luo a black line again, and for the nth time he doubted whether he was right to hire Deadpool. He has already decided, after Professor X gets it done, he immediately recruits a mutant team from the school and throws it to Deadpool to take it, so that the group of children will be ravaged. What, you ask if this will hurt the child's body and mind? Rest assured, Joe Luo will never hire minors. Recently, all the monsters and monsters are going out. Soon, under the leadership of Deadpool, Joe Luo saw the, vampire, in his mouth. The sharp fangs and blood-red pupils really looked like a horror movie. At the moment, a bunch of boys from Hell's Kitchen were watching this guy. After Joe Luo came back, he just said to Wesley. He was smart and immediately formed a gunman, guard. Joe Luo didn't have the spare time to bring these new recruits, all of them were thrown to the Deadpool commander, but he didn't expect to make a contribution when he first came up. 
Good fellow. It's garlic, cross, and ultraviolet light, are you professional? Zhou Luo joked with a smile while looking at Deadpool. Definitely, your loyal Deadpool is always so reliable and safe. Compared with ducks, Deadpool's only drawback is that it is not tight enough. As Deadpool talked and grinned and rubbed his fingers, he almost didn't engrave the word, boss for money, on the outside of his holster. A vampire with a bunch of things to restrain vampires, it's really interesting. Looking at the things that were found from that vampire, Joe Luo's mouth slowly contorted. He knew this man, he obviously had the blood of a vampire, but he was a famous vampire hunter. He is, Blade Warrior, Eric, also known as Daywalker. The mother of this man was bitten by a vampire when he was about to give birth, so the Blade Warrior had a, half-human, half-vampire blood, since he was born. The vampires in this world are very interesting. There are terrifying forces like the Karen family, waste vampires that even ordinary people can't beat, and Blood Clan, which is inherited from generations, can be regarded as a large biological population in this world. I really met a ruthless character. With eyes gleaming, Joe Luo strode towards the Blade Warrior. Whether it is in the comics or in the movies, it has been said more than once that Blade's blood is very special. Joe Luo is very curious about what makes him so special. If he can crack the secrets, he might be able to combine the information of the Super Soldier Project he has in his hands to create a real mass-produced Super Soldier. Couldn't there be an extra army of Super Fighters under Joe Luo's hands? It's too cool to think about it. You are a vampire hunter, a blade warrior. Ha ha ha, sorry, my men don't recognize you, thought you were a terrible blood clan, he started a little harder, he he, the wrong person. Joe Luo looked innocent and stuck out his tongue playfully. He thought he was cute, but selectively ignored Blade's dark old face. Look at you, and see what you beat people and children, Joe Luo saw the Blade Warrior look like, are you kidding me, and turned his head to face Deadpool. It's not serious or serious, what if it leaves a psychological shadow on people and children, huh? After getting Joe Luo's, increasing money, in the eyes, Deadpool immediately cooperated with Joe Luo's performance. Even Joe Luo fell on him and received a slap as touching as the encouragement of love. Finally, after a performance made the Blade Warrior, a little bit believe, in himself, Joe Luo stopped the clumsy performance that didn't wander at all. Since you already know my identity, why do you want to tie me up? Blade was angry, tying his cross because he was too excited, and let out a creaking, wailing. It's not impossible to let go of you. Seeing the other party's excitement, Joe Luo stretched out his hand to signal that he was relieved that he was not malicious. If you promise not to settle the account, I can untie the rope now. I'm not angry, everything is a misunderstanding, right? Although Blade feels that his words are leaking, he still has to pretend to be indifferent. After all, people are under the eaves. You have to be beaten if you don't bow your head, why bother? With his tongue swept his gums, Blade suddenly noticed that his fang was missing. Thinking of Joe Luo's grin when he just bared his teeth, Blade could only feel the scratching of his claws, and his dark old face was so black that it was shiny. Hey, a resounding tough guy, what happened to him to become what he is now? With deep emotion in his heart, Joe Luo took out a dagger and cut the opponent's rope. As soon as the escaped blade was about to throw his fist, his whole body was convulsed and fell to the ground with a thump. Standing next to Joe Luo, Deadpool definitely couldn't see his boss injured, and the thick and black electric baton in his hand directly stabbed in the past. Don't you always take it as your duty to hunt vampires? How come you suddenly appear here and attack my men? Joe Luo's eyes were narrowed into a slit. According to Blade's character, it is impossible to come here for no reason. The most likely thing is that there are a lot of vampires in this area. I got a message when I hunted vampires not long ago that the vampires are going to hold a carnival party. Carnival party. Vampires have fun with this too. In some ways, vampires are no different from ordinary people. But their party is a disaster for humans. What humans drink at banquets is wine, and what they drink is living human blood. After each banquet, there will be more than three-digit dry bodies cremated and buried. Quote. It seems that there is a ruthless character at this carnival, which can actually make you shrunk. Joe Luo knows that the Blade Warriors are extraordinary, even if they are facing Deadpool, they shouldn't be beaten so badly. 
Yeah, I don't know why, a vampire count actually got mixed with ordinary vampires. Suddenly he shot me seriously. Blade shared his experience and frowned inadvertently. Vampires with knighthoods are not easy to provoke. Even if it is a handle in a vampire hunter like Blade, aside from equipment, the hard power is not close to the Earl. And above the count of vampires, there are at least three classes, Marquis, Duke, and Prince. Not to mention the legendary ancestor of vampires. Count Vampire, Joe Luo's eyes narrowed into a line, and Joe Luo was a little upset. How to say it is now in his turf, let a group of vampires come out to make trouble, and say that he doesn't want face. Then what happened to my employee you attacked? Although he already had the thought of finding trouble with vampires in his mind, Joe Luo would not give up the available combat power of Blade in vain. Injured, failed to control the vampire's instincts. Speaking of this, Blade is also angry, if he didn't control himself for a while, how could he be so unlucky? Now there is no painless place on his whole body, and he almost didn't let people toss to death. So that's it. Nodding pretendingly, Joe Luo took advantage of the trend and threw out his own purpose. Although it was a misunderstanding, it is true that I hurt you. In that case, then I will help you kill this group of vampires. Joe Luo was polite. If Blade knew his careful thinking, he might be so angry that Joe Luo would die on the spot. Obviously he wanted to kill the vampire himself, but he made it like Blade begs him. It doesn't count as an understatement to expose what happened. Listening to the meaning of this sentence, Joe Luo seems to want Blade to owe him a favor. Thank you, then. Although something was faintly aware of something wrong, Blade's hatred of vampires still overwhelmed his IQ. At this moment, all he was thinking about was how to catch this group of vampires in one go, not one left. Vampire, maybe you can take this opportunity, he he he. Looking at Blade, who was in deep thought, Joe Luo's mouth curled up slightly. This group of vampires has a lot to do. Peter Parker, coming home from get off work, found a letter in the crack of the door of his rental room. Speaking of which Parker was also very depressed some time ago, the identity of Spider-Man kept him busy fighting crime all day, tired between work and righteousness. She left his girlfriend Mary Jane in the cold, and made him repeatedly criticized by his mean boss at work. But everything has changed recently. His battle suit has turned black for unknown reasons. After wearing this battle suit, his whole person has become faster and stronger. As if the desires hidden in his heart were all seduced, his actions were more unscrupulous, more violent and arrogant. A good lesson was given to the criminal, Sandman, who killed his uncle, and Eddie Brooke who made fake Spider-Man photos to compete with him. Let his face be discouraged, which made him look better for a while, and he became more and more lost in himself. At this moment, he found the anonymous letter, which was written on it as a group of vampires preparing to open a blood feast at the expense of a large number of ordinary people. Peter Parker's first reaction was anger, and he couldn't wait to rush out and smash the vampires. The second reaction is suspicion. Who is the person sending the letter to yourself? How would he know his identity? Is this a trap? But this suspicion was quickly swept away by the arrogance in his head, and the confident Peter Parker was ready to set off tonight, no matter what his conspiracy, I am the number one Spider-Man in the world. I can handle any conspiracy. Boss, your guest has arrived. In Joe Luo's office, Deadpool walked in vaguely, chewing on something he didn't know. To be honest, boss, where did you find such a ferocious child? That little fool who would set fire is even more hot-tempered than the sun I shot on the wall last night. He almost scorched my back just now. This kind of little fool should be sent to the circus and stay with the lion. Do you know why? Because he can be a lion jumping through the ring of fire. Quote. Shut up, Deadpool. Joe Luo interrupted Deadpool's chatter, he could even imagine what happened with his toes. After getting Joe Luo's approval, the fireman John who came in from outside the door was much more cautious than in front of Deadpool. Although he almost wanted to make this red headgear freak just because of the provocation by Deadpool, facing Joe Luo, he somehow became nervous. Maybe this is what it feels like to meet an idol. John comforted himself in his heart. Fireman John from Xavier School was the first mutant who applied to Professor X and wanted to work under Joe Luo. Because of Joe Luo's various activities during this period, Osborne Industries' recruitment for mutant has actually started. 
It's just that both mutant and ordinary people have scruples, so the activity is not so much fanfare. And his heart is eager to do a career, and his friend Iceman Bobby, who only wants to reunite with his family, has a completely different personality from John. Because Joe Luo's impassioned speech that day, he unknowingly has already raised his heart against Joe Luo. Deep worship. So after persuading each other with his friends to no avail, he resolutely decided to leave alone to follow Joe Luo. Diarysis, very well, John, you made a wise decision, follow me, you can get everything you want. Joe Luo stood up, and after talking with John for a while, he encouraged him and drew him a pie. Now, you are welcome to join my special combat team. You are very lucky, you have a mission tonight. Perform well, then there will be a huge bonus waiting for you. Wait a minute, bonus, Deadpool on the side suddenly jumped out, boom leket, Boss, why I don't know there is a bonus. Slap. Joe Luo slapped his face with a slap, leaving only deep helplessness in his heart. Deadpool fool, I will give some benefits to encourage new employees, don't you know how to cooperate? Deadpool, you are responsible for taking him tonight. Joe Luo turned around and left a sentence coldly. If the plan goes well tonight, John will get a bonus worth 100 good million dollars. And if John performs very well under your leadership tonight, then you will also get a million bonus. Ha! Huh. Deadpool was stunned, turned his head and looked at John who was vertically eyeing him, and suddenly felt a headache. The old Industrial Zone Hospital is a famous New York hospital that has once been brilliant, but as the Industrial Zone becomes lonely, this hospital has become a yellow flower in autumn. But today, here comes a, not an unusual group of guests. Under the cover of night, on the roof of the old hospital, a little Spider-Man wearing a pure black shirt stood on the metal railing, looking down at the target site code. As if the time had come, he leaned over and jumped down, threw a spider cobweb in midair, and let himself into the slaughterhouse below silently. And behind him, Deadpool, Blade Warrior, and John were huddled together, watching little Spider-Man move. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.